bespoke radio for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. What up, what up, what up? Fade to Black. Yeah, man. Bespoke radio for the masses. Tonight's Thursday, June 8th. 158 days into the new year, just 207 days left. We are live from a bunker somewhere in downtown Burbank, California. And I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States. Hither and hither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black. For KJCR, the Game Changer Network... And KGRA, the planet. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? It's Thursday. It's another Fader Night. That's right. We've got John Rappaport here and his No More Fake Newsroom live. Followed by open lines all night long. The call-in numbers are 323-825-5045 or 323-275. 9695. Follow us on Twitter at J Church Radio. Facebook, YouTube, you know what to do. Everything is Fade to Black, J Church Radio, Jimmy Church Radio, Fade to Black, Game Changer Network. Go now, follow, like, and subscribe. The Sandbox in Twitter, which is already on fire, is hashtag F2B. Download Tweet Deck. You know what to do. Get yourself some Tweet Deck. Get your columns going. We don't bite. Now, if you need some help with TweetDeck, download it. Go to Twitter. Download TweetDeck. Get it going. Come over and visit us. Do a hashtag F2B and say, hey, I'm a fade or not. I need some help here. All right? Because once you do it, you'll never go back. You'll never use Twitter uh, the Twitter way again. We have uh, taken over Twitter. That's what we have done. Yeah, Twitter, Twitter, should, Twitter should really check us. I should, I should get a hold of Jack Dorsey. I should tell Jack, this is how we use Twitter and and have him come over and visit and just watch what we do in one show. You know what? I'm going to do it now. Watch this. Okay, let's see here. At Jack. At Jack. You need to see how we use Twitter. Seriously. Yep. Check out hashtag F2B. There you go. Up, 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 up. Check out hashtag F2B. (laughs) Seriously. (laughs) Oh, man. There it goes. I'm sending it out now. Send it. I sent it to Jack. Jack Dorsey, you know, the CEO, uh, the boss of uh, Twitter, he follows me. I follow Jack. And uh, yeah. And so there you go. I don't know how many messages he gets or what pops up in his Twitter feed, but there you go. Everybody should retweet that right now. Just go and retweet the crap out of that and like it. All right, so there it is. There's 13, 14,000 of you right now in my Twitter feed. Everybody just go <laughs> and retweet that. He, he needs to check it out, man. He needs to check out 
uh, everything that we do. Okay. All right. Where am I? Email throughout the show tonight, any other night, Jimmy at JimmyTurchRadio.com. Very simple. Just make it good. It'll get through here to me. Tonight is Thursday night. It's Fader night. It, it is open lines all night long, which means everything is on the table. We had a very crazy day today. I'll talk about that in a second here in this country and around the world. And uh, so, oh, man, I don't want to talk politics, but I'll talk the conspiracy of politics. So if you want to talk about, listen to what I have to say here in a few minutes. And if you want to talk about that, that's fine. But UFOs, conspiracy, uh, disclosure, we've got Disclosure Fest next weekend. Are you going? We'd love to hear from you on that. Uh, disclosure, what's going on with our community, everything. I'll put everything on the table. You want to drop some names tonight? You want to go there? Let's do it. All right. Let's have a great Fader night. There is nothing like this Fader Not family. All right. Now, let's uh, get a couple of things out of the way. Of course, subscribe to our podcast. We have over 670 archive shows, 670 archive shows for your listening pleasure. Go. It's only $2 a month. Just go to the iTunes store, go to the Google store, search Fade to Black, download our software. Uh, the apps go over to Libsyn, get your account two dollars a month. There you go. You can listen to a replay of the show whenever you want. All right, driving to work the next day. There you go. It's done. Um, or you have our membership area this month in our membership area for anybody that becomes a fade or not. Over in our membership area, we're giving away a life change tea care package. And it's going to be really cool. It's going to have all the uh, fundamentals, all the important stuff for you and your health. So become a member. Go over to our membership area. It's uh, You can go from free to full-on game changer, and everything is there. If you have an upgrade, we now have an upgrade path for you. It's very simple. If you want to upgrade, you want to go from fade or not to game changer or or whatever. You want to go uh, bacon bar. You can, you can do that. Just click upgrade when you go, and everything is automated, and you can uh, upgrade right now. And uh, if you upgrade, by the way, we'll throw your name in the hat because that will be in this month's uh, tally. You know, we go from month to month to month to month. So if you upgrade this month, your name goes in the hat. It did last month too, but it'll do it again this month. Go and upgrade now. It's very simple to do. Don't forget to check out all of our sponsors, Life Change Tea, GetTheTea.com, River Moon Coffee, Studio Dome Speakers. Click on their banners over at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Of course, also Ancient Life Oil, CBDs. Go and click on all the banners there. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, hello to everybody in the bunker cam tonight. And uh, for all of the Fader Knots, you know, Thursday nights, you get the bunker cam, right? There you go. Free. Become a member. That's all you got to do. It's very simple. All right. Next week, uh, we had this great Disclosure Fest show last night. And uh, what's with the Angus Young? Is it his birthday or something? Enough Angus Young here to hurt somebody. But uh, is that Europe? Who is? <laughs> what are you guys are out of control, man. That looked like Europe for a second. Or is that Def Leppard? I can't tell. And they all look the same, don't they? Uh, Disclosure Fest we did last night on the show. It was really cool. Richard Yim and Laura Eisenhower and uh, Robot Nature, the band. Uh, just just a great show last night. And Adrian, and, and just thank you for everybody that participated in the show last night. Next weekend, that mass meditation initiative is going to happen Saturday, June 17th at the Los Angeles State Historic Park in downtown Los Angeles. If you go to DisclosureFest.com and uh, right there on the homepage, there's a map. Uh, there's a, a, a full layout of the event where the stages are, where the food trucks are. Green Truck is going to be there, by the way. They uh, let me know today in Twitter. So Green Truck is going to be there. Love Green Truck. And uh, so we've got food, festivities. Things to do for the kids. We have music and, of course, speakers and meditation and and lectures and tents. And just, just come down and hang out. It'll be next Saturday, June 17th. www.disclosurefest.com. And then right after that, for the July 4th weekend, we will be at East SETI Ranch for their July 4th Science, Spirit, and World Transformation Conference. 
Just click on the banner over at our site, jimmychurchradio.com, for tickets and info, hotels, anything you want to do. You can also camp there. So there you go. East Eddie Ranch bucket list thing. I'll be speaking Saturday and Sunday up there. And then, of course, in August, uh, Corey Good will be up at Mount Shasta for his conference. I'll be hosting that event. And uh, the website is getting ready to launch for that. So we'll get that up as soon as it is ready. Spoke to those guys today. All right, let's get this show cracking. Happy birthday to today, Bonnie Tyler. That's right. I said it. Total eclipse of the heart. Somebody post me some Bonnie Tyler gifts. I want to see a Bonnie Tyler gift. Let me see how how much you guys are on top of your game right now. Let me see some Bonnie Tyler. Nancy Sinatra today is 77. Of course, these boots are made for walking. Jerry Stiller, father of Ben Stiller, all-around funny guy, today is 90. Unbelievable. And Tim Berners-Lee today is 62. And without him, you wouldn't be listening to me right now because... He invented the World Wide Web. Our dead guy's birthday today, Joan Rivers. There you go. All right, Bonnie Tyler, that was quick. Karen McIntyre gets the uh, retweet on that. That was fast. Oh, wait. Oh, no, no, that's, I thought that was. (laughs) You guys are funny. I almost clicked on that. There's another one. Mark Tarana, you're late, though, bro. Bra, bra, bra. All right, Tim Berners-Lee. Our dead guy's birthday today is Joan Rivers. 1933 to 2014, died at the age of 81. On this day in history, OTD, 1969, Brian Jones leaves the Rolling Stones. And then, less than one month later after his departure from the band, he was found dead in his swimming pool in Sussex, England, He was 27 years old. Fader fact. Now, this is for everybody over in Australia. You ready? (laughs) This is crazy, too. Man, I'm digging. I'm digging. You guys responded. I'm digging the uh, Bonnie Tyler. I'll do another. I'll do another retweet. I like Bonnie Tyler. Those were those were the days of MTV, right? Okay. Fader fact. Fully vetted. Syria had more tourists than Australia in 2010 <laughs> that is a fader fact tonight's another fader night john rapaport and his no more fake newsroom live followed by open lines all night long the call in numbers are 323-825-5045 or 323-275-9695 all right man i'm gonna hit this river moon coffee gonna have to some f2b blend mm. Why? Well, I need it. Had to get up early today. And uh, because the nation and the world were sucked into the Comey testimony with Congress. Yeah, that's right. Broadcast around the world live on every channel that has a video feed. And this morning, coffee was brewed, breakfast served. You know, as the world gathered around their televisions and tablets and cell phones and got ready for the big game, I watched the entire thing. And afterwards, I kind of felt like I do after I pay 70 bucks for a Floyd Mayweather fight on HBO, you know, or after one of those ho-hum Super Bowls. You got a whole lot of nothing. I got played. So did you. Again. So did you. Every time I cough up the ducks for a pay-per-view, right, or sit through a Super Bowl party that I spent way too much money on, I swear, I swear to myself, I'll never do it again. I'll never do it again. But I do. I always know that I shouldn't, but I'm a sucker, just like you. And I know that if I don't watch, if I don't pay, I'll miss the biggest, coolest thing ever. And you know the definition of insanity, right? Okay. Well, it's like that. What's my take on Comey's big day? Well, it was a snooze fest. 
the thing you play when you want to fall asleep. That's what it was. Neither side, my friends, can claim a victory. But both are going to try. And you know that they're going to say they got something to help their cause. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm talking about. And in the end, it was a big letdown for everyone. It doesn't matter who you are. With all the buildup from the media, I can honestly say that it was just boring. Seriously. I can imagine, especially in Washington, right? But around the country, around the world. I can imagine everyone from the right or from the left just leaning forward, right? Leaning forward after every question, you know, listening and waiting for the big moment that never happened. You know, that wait for it. Here it comes. But you get nothing. That's what it was. I mean, seriously. For me, look, I just want things to get resolved, whatever it is. I actually thought that something would break for either side and we could move in a direction that would finally allow us as a country to move on. It just didn't happen. I understand that people are going to hear what they want to hear. I, I, I understand that. I really, really do. Even now, as I speak, people are going to hear what they want to hear. They're going to take these words the wrong way. That doesn't bother me. Just listen. There are those out there who are going to say, you know, Jimmy, what are you, nuts? Comey said this and Comey said that. He didn't say this. He was right. He was wrong. He's lying. He's telling the truth. I'm going to hear all of that. I'm just going to hear everything. People hear what they want to hear. I can say this. I don't have a dog in this race. I just want the truth, whatever it may be. And with Washington, you just never get it. You never get the truth. I was hoping for something today. I really was. And I know that both sides of Congress uh, this morning... We're hoping for that big breakthrough moment. And it just never happened, did it? It just never happened. They tried. To me, Comey was was just able to never commit to anything or anyone, anybody that asked any questions. And after a while, everything just became quite predictable. I knew his answers before he opened his mouth. So things moved on this afternoon to this closed session and what could be said at this closed session that wasn't covered this morning. Well, probably nothing. The questions that needed to be asked were asked and were answered. And I'm sure that the same frustrations occurred privately, just like they did publicly. When I said on yesterday's show that this drama would play out to be bigger than Watergate. And I meant what I said, but what I meant by that was that there is a conspiracy playing in the background. There is, there's something going on. And that's what this show is about. That's what my mind is about. There's something going on. Is it Trump? Don't know. Is it the FBI? Don't know. NSA, CIA, another agency? I don't know. Is it the deep state? I don't know. Is it Russia? Don't know. Does it go even further than all of that? I don't know. Who was really running this and pushing this agenda? I don't know. Something is going to break sooner or later. That is for sure. And we're going to find out just how big, how corrupt, and who is the who behind this mess. And to me, it's really going to just freak everybody out. Both sides. Every side, if you think about it. Throughout the day today, I've heard everyone's take on Comey's answers. I, I really wanted, it was just fascinating. I really wanted to hear how they were going to respond to it. And it was really funny to hear the spin. And it's continuing now, you know, from both sides. And 
all day today and I'm listening to the spin. I'm just listening to the spin and I'm just keep saying to myself, did you even hear a thing? <laughs> what are you talking about? Nothing happened. For me, it's just like, let them spin because that's all they can do. They have to spin because nothing happened. Think about it. There were no answers to anything. I really, I really wanted something to break. I did. And as we move forward in the days and the months ahead, the drama is going to continue, but it'll be more in the background if you think about it, fueled by, you know, leaks and insiders with the investigations. And, you know, the bottom line is the hope of things being resolved today were just dashed. Without any answers, this mess will carry on over the next year or two. Seriously, if you think about that, nothing got resolved. But for now, for now, we will be back to the national and world agenda with the media. Yeah, (laughs) it's going to be back and our community, too, as well. Coverage in the media today, it was fascinating, quickly switched to the British elections. Comey faded into the background quicker than, you know, like a Tom Cruise movie. It was it was instantaneous because they had nothing. They had nothing to feed on uh, the right or the left. Anybody. There was just nothing there. So they had to move on because there was nothing for anybody to say. Trust me. If there were any revelations today, this country would have been tipped upside down. And it wasn't. It wasn't. Think about it. If something would have broke today from either any, just one thing, it would have been on. But nothing happened. We're all still here, aren't we? Because... Instead of an ending to this movie, which is what I was hoping for today, it seems like we got the opening of a double feature that's going to play over and over all year long. For us, if, you know, just kind of think about it like this. For us, our community, disclosure is still here, right? We have the issues with Gobekli Tepe and the paranormal and the supernatural and channeling and 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 contact your past lives and near death experiences and trying to figure all of that. none of that has gone away so we still have all of that and i love that part of it we can just get back to trying to be ourselves but we also with the media now they can go back on their feeding frenzy with syria right Russia, China, North Korea, Iran, Iraq, oil, jobs. How about the wall? Forgot about that, didn't you? Brexit. Brexit's about to heat up in a big way. And we've got that. We've got the Bilderbergs and we've got Bohemian Grove and we've got the economy and taxes and whatever happened to health care. WikiLeaks will be right there with us to give us something every single week. And above all, we have the Cavs being swept by Golden State. Think about that. You know, I, 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 I got up this morning. The sun came up. It was a new day. And I brewed that coffee. And I, I watched every minute of everything. And I just wrote it through. And I could not believe after after all of that was done and i just thought well that was a that was a uh <laughs> anticlimactic right and then i had to listen to uh the white house attorney whatever that jack's name was come out and speak attorney speak Ugh. had to deal with that i much rather <laughs> would have had that you know, uh, you know, Trump and the White House come out and go, see, we caught, me. you know, I would have loved for that. I would have just loved, for, but no, they they have no bullets in their gun. And the same thing for the left, nothing, nothing dramatic, nothing. The testimony was just laid out for Comey to say one more, well, you know, that's just my opinion, but you know, it, you know, one more answer like that. 
non-committal to either side. I mean, it was just fascinating for uh, for each uh, senator, Republican and Democrat, uh, changing hands, changing sides, going back and forth. Each one of them with a barrage of questions and got absolutely nowhere. And then, oh, above all, okay, you know, I, I almost forgot. This is what I do when I improvise, when I just rant. I forgot about McCain. Did anybody watch that? <laughs> now, McCain, who I think we all respect, his history is his history, and and he's a true hero and all of that. And we have to have to respect McCain, no matter what. Is he a little whack sometimes? Sure. Is he right? He's right a lot of the time. Is he wrong? He's wrong a lot, too. Whatever. But I respect him and for what he's done. And we'll never forget that missile launch on that aircraft carrier. That was just crazy. Anyway, what was up with McCain today? I mean, is is he one step away from insanity? Is there something going on? Is there some type of old people's disease that is creeping in on his brain? I know you guys saw it, and I, I felt bad for him. <laughs> call me call me just look confused i was confused so there you go that was the highlight of the day i guess it had nothing to do with anything that comey said it was all about mccain and like i said we we we've got the calves sweeping uh or being swept by golden state and with that let's get out of here john rapaport is up next with his no more fake newsroom live and now we can kind of get on with our lives. This is Fade to Black. It's Thursday night. It's Fader night. Taking your calls all night long. Up next, John Rappaport and his No More Fake Newsroom Live. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Network and KGRA, The Planet. I'll be right back. Listening to Jimmy Church fade to black. Fade to black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net, KGRA Radio. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in, and then roast it to the dark side of fade to black. You create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the Fade to Black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of Fade to Black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Go back, Lee Tepe. Hi, folks. Let's wind the clocks back 60 years. Food was different. Food provided health and nutrition, and using supplements was minimal. Unfortunately, now we have chemicals, GMOs, herbicides, and pesticides that can be quite lethal in the name of our food supply and, of course, the ever-loving dollar. Supplementing our diets can be very important to stay healthy. Cleansing from daily intruders to the body might be critical. Live strong and take charge. Log on to GetTheTea.com. Our herbal tea is a great way to cleanse from intruders. Our supplements is a great way to maintain and improve your health. When your health is not up to par, go to GetTheTea.com. No GMOs, no fillers, and organic. And very helpful in keeping you at the top of your game. Life is too short to feel, uh, you know what I mean. Stay in the game, at the top of your game, with GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Again, GetTheTea.com.
Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to Black is not your father's radio show on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the planet. Win big with KGRA this summer. Tickets and hotel accommodations to the biggest conferences. Autograph books and DVDs. Chances to win all-inclusive conference cruises and private dinners with your favorite KGRA hosts. Click the contest tab at KGRARadio.com for your chance to win big this summer. Your contact for the best alternative talk radio on the planet. KGRARadio.com. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Massey, and you're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. And now, coming to you from the No More Fake Newsroom in Deep Space, which is the space that we suspect to be true. That the world as it is fed to us every day by the Ministry of Truth is a lie, a false reality, a movie projected on the screen of our subconscious. This, however, is the breakout. All the screens crash, they all go down, and we see the light of day. A new day. No more robots, no more androids. It's the No More Fake Newsroom with John Rappaport. Take it away, John. Thank you, Jimmy. Wow. Okay, this is a big one, folks. I'm just getting into this, so there's going to be more coming. We're talking about opioid addiction and death. Opioid. Medical drugs, also including heroin, but we're going to concentrate on the medical drugs, Derived from, related in some way to opium. That's kind of the the basic root of the drugs. But there are many synthetic versions of opioid drugs. These are painkillers given presumably to patients with pain. Um, I just scrolled down a list of opioid drugs. And I counted at least 100. That's probably an underestimate of the different drugs that exist that are called opioids. There are different classes and categories and so on and so forth. So we're talking about, (laughs) I mean, gigantic numbers of drugs. Some that you might be more familiar with, fentanyl, oxycontin. Uh, morphine itself is considered an opioid, hydrocodone, marketed as Vicodin, Percocet, and of course, uh, Oxycontin. These would be just a few examples. And I'll tell you about one. It's called Carfentanil. This is an elephant tranquilizer okay but humans are using it and it is 10,000 times stronger than morphine I don't know how many of you have ever been prescribed morphine for pain for example in a hospital so forth and so on but morphine is a very strong very strong painkiller extremely strong So we're talking about a drug that is 10,000 times stronger than morphine. Okay, so there is a national epidemic, as they like to call it, of people dying from opioids. And it's getting really bad. I wrote an article the other day. Uh, the state of Ohio is suing five pharmaceutical companies for uh, basically what you could call false advertising. But, I mean, we're really talking about extended campaigns to minimize the risks associated with opioid drugs and overemphasize or highlight the advantages 
long-running campaigns. So what's happened in Ohio? In 2012, get this, 793 million opioid pills were prescribed in the state of Ohio. By 2016, this figure had dropped to a mere 631 million pills in the state of Ohio. So when I wrote this article, um, a source in Ohio wrote me back saying, this is real. He said, I see these people all the time. They're walking around like zombies. <laughs> so the state of Ohio and other states, Kentucky, West Virginia, I mean, it's national. It's, I'm sure it's global. But we're talking about, uh, let's see here. What's the figure that I had written down here? Just making notes all the way up to broadcast time. 2014, opioids killed 47,000 people in the United States. More people than died from uh, car accidents, for example. And if I'm recalling correctly, that's about the number of people that, uh, soldiers that died in Vietnam, U.S. soldiers, during the whole war. Now, as far as I can tell so far, this figure does not include heroin. So we're talking about medical drugs, prescription drugs. So... How do we piece this together? First of all, let's take the state of Ohio. There is no possible way that doctors could be prescribing 793 million pills for patients on the basis of needing relief from pain. No possible way. I mean, just think about it. So these doctors are prescribing the drugs for other reasons. Who knows what? Including, of course, to patients that are already addicted, because these drugs are highly addictive. They produce, at first, a euphoric experience. Okay. But then, of course, like every other drug of this kind, the person has to increase the dose in order to feel the same high. And so the need becomes greater for more and more and more of the drug. And uh, I assume, you know, there's a, there's a crossover point, obviously, right, where it's no longer a matter of euphoria, it's a matter completely of addiction, and then the body is also being destroyed at the same time. So why are these doctors in the state of Ohio prescribing these drugs? Obviously, the vast majority of the patients are not getting the drugs for pain. Getting them because they don't feel good, they feel depressed, uh, they're not satisfied with their lives, they're addicts. I mean, none of these are, are reasons to prescribe the drugs. They are for severe pain, and the doctors know that, you see. So the tune that's being played here is, well, the doctors are not really responsible because the doctors have been bamboozled by the marketing campaigns of the pharmaceutical companies, which, by the way, include inserting fake science articles and magazines and so on, and... Uh, rigging treatment guidelines and all of that, right? So you see the doctors were taken in by all of this, and that's why this, no, that's not why this is happening. Doctors are not that stupid. They understand what these drugs are made of and the, uh, the, the power of the drugs. 
They see addicts uh, to these drugs all the time. So the doctors cannot be let off the hook for this. They are part and parcel responsible for this epidemic of addiction, destruction of life, and actual death from these opioids. And, uh, you know, if you've been listening to the show on any kind of regular basis, you know that I've been on the case of medical drug destruction and toxicity for many years. So uh, I'm trying to keep my blood from boiling as I'm talking about this to you now, because time and time again, the doctors have been let off the hook. Well, they didn't know. They were fooled. Uh, the information they were receiving was incorrect and so on and so forth. Baloney. Anybody that goes through medical school understands the mechanism by which these drugs work. And with a little research, it would be obvious that they are highly dangerous and addictive drugs, and they must never be prescribed except in extreme circumstances. And 793 million pills of opioids prescribed in one year in Ohio does not rank as being uh, highly cautious and, uh, you know, practicing medicine correctly, even by conventional standards, there's absolutely no way that that is happening. These doctors are just as responsible as the pharmaceutical companies who are devising and launching all the fake information about how these drugs are not that all that harmful and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So the state of Ohio is suing these five drug companies. We'll see what happens, but as usual, in most of these cases, what happens is the drug companies are let off the hook with a large fine, which doesn't even begin to uh, match what the profit is on selling the drug, and the drug companies move right along. Nobody goes to prison. However, however, articles in the press are now revealing that there are doctors who are intentionally putting together what they call pill mills. These are not usual methods of prescribing. The doctors become the source for writing the prescriptions, but the whole plan is a business plan to make millions of dollars using the doctors as the source but then the dr and then actual drug dealers to distribute the pills it's you know we're we're now at a whole different level this is like a a drug trafficking center that these doctors MDs head up and one doctor in Los Angeles I believe it was I was just reading about her was sentenced to 30 years to life in prison because I think it was six of her patients or patients that received these drugs died. Don't know whether they were direct patients or just part of her pill mill. These are team efforts, you see. <clears throat> and doctors are involved. Wow. Okay. Now, the FDA just asked a drug company that's uh, headquartered in Europe called Endo to withdraw an opioid called Opana ER from the market because of, you know, what they call abuse. People are dying. People are getting terminally addicted. And the drug had been reconfigured at one point by Endo, the company, supposedly to avoid the possibility of abuse, but it didn't work. It made things worse, apparently. So now the FDA is asking, asking the company to withdraw the drug from the market and saying if they don't do it voluntarily, then it's quite possible that the FDA will uh, issue an edict 
that the drug cannot be sold in America, I don't know whether the FDA would go that far because the FDA is notorious for not going as far as it needs to. Hmm. Okay, let's see what else I've got here in my notes. Yeah, like uh, many other drugs of this type, the euphoric experience is what drags people into it. So they want more. And then wanting more, eventually, like I said, it requires more drug to produce the same effect or a similar effect. At the same time, let's not uh, try to make a case that there is no escape once you, you take one of these drugs for the first time. It takes a certain type, shall we say, a person who wants to pursue that experience through drugs, as it does with all addiction. This is not a situation where, uh, for example, if you took this drug once and then didn't take it again, you would die or some horrible thing would happen to you. There is an intention to pursue a course of, let's call it, experience that leads a person down the trail using these drugs. So to say that the addict has absolutely no responsibility is not only incorrect, but it's damaging in the way of trying to rehabilitate people who have become addicted to drugs. That's just the way it is. If you try to rehabilitate addicts and somehow indicate to them that they have no responsibility for their addiction, that it's only a disease and it's chemical in nature and they have no control over it, good luck in rehabilitation. And, of course, that tends to be the medical model. Well, we have drugs to treat the drugs. We have other drugs, yeah, but those drugs also have toxic side effects and, or effects, and they don't guarantee uh, the end of addiction. Now, I have to warn here, as I do most every time I talk about psychiatric drugs, that sudden withdrawal from these opioids can be extremely dangerous and in some cases life-threatening. There is a serious withdrawal problem for people. So this would have to be done in an intelligent way, gradually, certainly under the supervision of somebody who really is a professional and understands how to do it correctly, given the condition of the patient, the person. <clears throat> because not everybody is the same. And I would never personally myself make the assumption that any old MD would be expert enough to supervise correctly the withdrawal from any one of these opioids. Okay, so I have to be, let's say, uh, somewhat distant from this situation, if only because for the last, I don't know how many years, I've been hammering on the subject of toxic medical drugs in general, in general. And I have cited the same studies over and over, particularly the Starfield Review published in the Journal of the American Medical Association on July 26, 2000, called Is U.S. Health Really the Best in the World?, where Dr. Starfield, who was at the time a revered health expert at Johns Hopkins School of Public Health indicated that every year in the U.S. 
100,000, 106,000 people are killed by uh, FDA-approved medical drugs. That would be over a million people per decade. And she is not talking about opioids per se. She is talking about the full range of medical drugs. In an interview with me conducted in 2009, she indicated that hers was a conservative estimate and that later research indicated that the death toll was higher. This does not even take into account the millions, literally millions of people who are severely affected adversely by these same medical drugs. Millions every year in the U.S. So, the mainstream press and governments, state governments, for example, and other players will fix on to this opioid addiction epidemic, which is quite real, quite dangerous, quite horrific, but fail to visit the larger picture. And that is on purpose, because if they did visit the larger picture, they would see that they are indicting a full spectrum of medical practice in America and by extension other countries. That it's not just the doctors who are prescribing painkillers, for example. There is a full range and spectrum of medical drugs that are killing and maiming people in America of which the opioids are only one piece. But to go to the larger arena would and could threaten the very foundations of the U.S. medical system as it is now constructed, which is basically a pharmaceutical system and a pharmaceutical bonanza. The pharmaceutical companies, of course, who make these, I'll get back to opioids now, are fully aware of the consequences. They are not babes in the woods. They know what the effects of these drugs are. They know about the addiction. They know about the damage and destruction and death. They understand what's happening here. And, of course, they will uh, bring out their favorite rationalizations, especially in court cases, lawsuits, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But behind all that, they know what's going on. And they don't care. And that is a, uh, a minimal uh, evaluation on my part. I would go a lot further than simply accusing them of indifference, but that's a different story for a different time. So to simply allow them to say, settle a lawsuit, like in the case of Ohio, there's a very good chance that the whole thing will never go to trial because the drug companies don't want the discovery process. They don't want information to come out to the public about what they knew and when they knew it and how little they care and uh, all their manipulation of, uh, say, studies and their marketing campaigns, et cetera, et cetera, right? Therefore, they would offer to settle. And so it's quite possible that the attorney general of the state of Ohio, faced with years of litigation in front of him, would say, okay, here's the deal. And the deal would be a fine, an apology, a lot of good that does, and nobody goes to prison. Nobody from the pharmaceutical company goes to prison. That is the normal way things are done. 
And so that is likely to happen here. And because the pharmaceutical companies know this, and they know they can get away with it, that means that they can pretty much market and sell whatever they want to with uh, towering indifference, to say the least, about the effects of the drugs that they know very well and just simply ignore. Now, like this doctor in Los Angeles, if we had, let's say, a dozen pharmaceutical executives and CEOs that were sent to prison for, uh, say, 50 years, 50 years sentences, then you might begin to see a little bit more caution exercised, a little bit more perspicacity about the studies that were being done and the clinical trials and so on and so forth. But it's never happened, prison sentences like this for drug execs, and I don't see that on the horizon. So that is a preliminary report on opioids and the opioid epidemic that has overtaken America, and uh, I give it to you as both information and also as a cautionary note to you personally. That's my story for tonight. John, I got to jump in and and say it, it, it comes down to one thing, dollars. And I don't know what it is per pill and how many, uh, but I can I can only venture to guess. We're probably looking at between five and ten billion dollars in profit, you know, mm-hmm. or, or more per year, and that's what drives it. And as long as that is there, you know, opium for the masses, right? You know, a, yeah, a pure addiction, a, a, a real addiction, and it feeds itself. Yes, it does. It feeds itself. Uh, You know, when we have more time, I could go into what I think are motives beyond the profit motive. But that is, you know, the one that hits you right in the face. If you're making billions of dollars, you're not going to pay attention to a little thing like side effects and death. No, you're, you're going to sell the drugs, especially <laughs> I know, when right? you know that you can't be put in prison for it. Exactly, exactly. Nobody's held accountable, and as long as you know the lobbyists drive Washington D.C., things are going to continue like they are. It is, it is purely when we're talking about billions of dollars, and and answering to stockholders and keeping the margins high. Right, and there you go. It can't be expensive at all to manufacture these. The profit margin just must be ridiculous. Gigantic. Gigantic. Thank you so much, John. You are the very best, my friend. Again, we'll see you you next Thursday. Be safe out there. John Rappaport, everybody. There you go. Yeah, we're talking about a sick amount of money. Start off your day every day at nomorefakenews.com. Thank you, John Rappaport. This is Thursday night, Fader night, opening up the phone lines right now. Taking your phone calls next, 323-825-5045, 323-275-9695. This is Fade to Black. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station, Salt Lake City, Utah, Van Buren, Arkansas. Hello, I'm Katie, and you're listening to my main man, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Hi, this is Ray Sobs here, repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church, Fade to Black, on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're, We're the Honey Brothers. brothers. <laughs> We're of the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. Ancient Life Oil. 
Life-changing. The real oil. CBD is truly ancient life oil from the source. This oil has no psychoactive effect and is also legal in all 50 states. When you're healthy, you're happy. The truth about this wonderful plant is that it wants to give back to mankind. Life, longevity, and happiness. Ancient life oil are golden grade. All organic, non-GMO, and infused with high-quality liquid coconut oil. It's simple. Just go to ancientlifeoil.com today. That's ancientlifeoil.com. The best, purest, organic, and non-GMO CBD in the world. Go back, Lee Tappy. The statements made regarding these products have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Please consult your healthcare professional about potential interactions or other possible complications before using any product. What's up, Fader Knots? Studio Dumb loves Fade to Black and the F2B audience so much that they have put together the ultimate stereo Bluetooth system. They've done it just for you. Man, check this out. The Studio Dome SBB2 stereo system is here. It's featuring two Studio Boombox 2 SBB2 wireless Bluetooth speakers packed in its own custom hard shell case. This Studio Dome system features the very latest in stereo Bluetooth technology. The two full range boomboxes are in true wireless stereo. You've got to hear this, it's amazing. It's just 129 bucks, and use the promo code JCRTWS, and you'll also get free shipping. It's simple. Just go to JimmyChurchRadio.com, click on the Studio Dome banner. Go back, Lee Tappy. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black. Across the globe on the Game Changer Radio Network and the one and only KGRA Radio, The Planet. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Fade to Black, Fader Night, Thursday night. Open lines, 323-825-5045 or 323-275-9695. Everything is on the table. Talk about the conspiracy of what went on today. And uh, um, also, you know, so uh, Comey this morning, I just find uh, that entire charade, that saga hysterical so uh what we can talk about that also um with uh the voting today in great britain which i found interesting because of once again it was about the polls right and i was reading about that i thought man no way really and i was i was reading about the polls and i was supposed to be one way then i went the other and then this was gonna happen and and uh the majority wasn't gonna happen and Theresa may was on her way out and and now I'm looking at uh, the election results rolling in on the, the big screen here. Hello, everybody, on the uh, bunker cam. You can see I've got uh, that mounted over there in the bunker. And it's just very interesting. It's just like the same thing we went through over here. You would think somebody would learn, right? Don't pay attention to polls. And, and seriously. So there's that. And, uh, of course, everything that is going down in our little paranormal community and and ufology and and things are heating up and cooling down heating up and cooling down so all of that is on the table and if you've seen anything strange in the skies few few pretty crazy reports uh over the week too as well we can talk about those all right and i'll kick things off with this tonight as we uh wait for the uh, phone calls uh to start to line up here before i get to them some of all the news that you know nothing about. Check this out. Sandy Hook, back in the news. A woman who claimed that the Sandy Hook school shooting was a hoax. And, well, she was sentenced to five months in prison after she pleaded guilty to threatening one of the 60-year-old victim's father. Lucy Richards pleaded guilty to one count of sending threats through interstate communications. Now, you got to be, these days, you need to be really, really, really careful about 
anything like that. You go and you use the internet, you use a phone, and you threaten somebody. You, oh man, and that that comes at you from so many different state and federal laws. It's it's frightening. So be very very careful. She admitted to sending the father a message that read, and I'm quoting here, look behind you, it is death. That's what got her sentenced. Prosecutors allege that Richards left voicemails and emails to the Sandy Hook shooting victim's father last January. However, three of the four charges initially brought against Richards were dismissed because it was part of a plea deal. Richards is part of, you know, that group of people out there who believe that the Sandy Hook school shooting was a hoax used to push support for gun control. I'm not part of that group. Save the email. Jimmy, man, have you read? Have you heard? Yes, I've read and heard it all. Okay? I've tried. I, you know, I really wanted something to happen out of that. But no, it just, it just wasn't there. Um, she's going to have to serve five months in prison. And after that, she's going to be on house arrest for five months. Then she's going to spend three years on supervised release and will have to record her computer activity during that time. The victim, his name was Len, Lenny Ponzer. His six-year-old son, Noah, was killed in the 2012 shooting. Why she would harass this parent, I don't know. I don't know how she chased this guy down. I don't know what she thought. I really don't care. I do know this, and I've been vocal about this over the years, and so just let me just say this. I'm a parent. I don't know how many of you out there are, but I'm a parent. And if my child lost their life at something like that, some crazy school shooting, and the false flaggers are coming out in waves. And and I'm having to deal with that and hear about that. And then they just want to come back. I don't want to be, I mean, I, I would just be devastated even beyond what it would be like when you lose a child. And they have to relive this every single day. I don't want to be a part of that. That's why I, I just don't ride the Sandy Hook wagon. I just can't do it. I can't do it. If, if, and I, and and let me say this, if one of those children, if one of the death certificates was revealed to be fake and the child proved through DNA was in Ecuador, you know, living on payoff money, and, and if that actually happened, then that's a different story. But until then, all of it is just pure crazy talk. You know, and, and that's really the truth. I don't want to be a part of it. I do not. I, I just don't want to be a part of uh, uh, causing more grief and pain for a parent. I, I, I just, I can't, I can't be a part of it. And anybody that is, that is part of it, is not a parent. I'm telling you. Or they're, if they are, they're the worst parent that ever lived. And that's that's my take. So save the email. I don't want to. I don't want to hear about your proof about Sandy Hook. I I, I don't because there is none. All right. I, I watched all those police videos and all the radio traffic. Man, I did it for hours, if not days, and I read and oh man, and all of the conspiracy false flag videos on it. I watched them all, all. And none of it, and this is what is really strange to me because usually I can, you know, tie things together and connect the dots and go, wow, we've got something here. I did, nothing convinced me of anything. Oh, man, they were training for a terrorist thing and, and, and it was in town and it was just there and it was a coincidence. It was on the same day. So what? I don't care about that. That's not proof of anything. But it's all parts of the puzzle, and you look at everything in its totality, and, and then look, and they were chasing extra guys, and they were chasing guys through the – man, save all that. <laughs> save all of it. Man, but there's the girl that was the crisis act. Save it. 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 Don't send me any email, please. I can already see the the posts and the tweets, but – 
Anyway, this woman got what's coming to her. I think uh, she was sentenced a little bit lightly here. She's lucky I wasn't the judge. All right, what else have we got here? Oh, 323, now that I've ranted and let me turn on the phones. Hold on. All right, you guys are watching me here in, in on the bunker cam. Okay, we're active. Boom, let me get the other system going. Okay, we're good. 323-825-5045 and 323-275-9695. Following last month's uh, successful test, the United States now has the ability to shoot down intercontinental ballistic missiles targeting targeting the homeland. And this is according to a memo from the Office of the Pentagon's Chief Weapons Officer. The new evaluation represents an upgrade, as the Pentagon office has previously said that the United States only possessed a limited ability to protect the the continental U.S. from an enemy missile. So there you go. And now oh, I forget what they're calling it. It's this big golf ball giant thing over in Pearl Harbor. It's it's, uh, it's pretty dramatic. It's pretty cool. Everybody's been wondering what this thing out there is does, but apparently that's what it is. Let's go to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hey, Jimmy, it's Fran. Hey, Fran, how are you? I'm good. Hey. Yes. I watched part of that Comey thing today yeah. on uh, YouTube, the live broadcast that they were doing. Right. And you know how over on the right they have their chat room going? Uh, I don't, but I'll take your word for have it. Ever, what, okay. So what anyway, was that? that was the end result that they were looking for. They achieved their goal in what, doing the hearing. And what was the goal? Oh. To get those people in the chat room going nuts. And what were they going nuts was, about? Oh, my. Just back and forth at each other. I mean, the big divide was real evident. And, and well, give me an example. What do you remember? Oh, name calling of each other. Uh, one person would be Comey's an idiot. And the other person is, no, he's telling the truth. You know, they were just all over the place. It was ugly. How many? I had well, after about fifteen minutes, I had to close it. Right, you closed the chat room. Did you continue yeah. watching the uh, the uh, testimony? I actually missed most of the testimony, and then I got about the last five minutes, and then they went to that uh, closed session. Right. But I listened in and watched the uh, talking heads talk to each other about what they thought, and I was like. Yeah, good grief. Yeah, yeah, I wish, I wish, Fran, you would have seen all of it from the beginning because if you would have done that and then just, you know, just kept an open mind, whatever, you know, and, and watch the talking heads respond after that, you would see that they were, they were literally putting a spin on nothing. And that's what was so right. interesting. And, and I know it's well, probably I'm still going on. I'm, I missed the beginning of it because I wasn't awake yet. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't supposed to. Be, I, yeah, I wasn't supposed to be awake. I don't get up till noon. But, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was a trip, and I I so wanted. This is I, I'm serious. I love a good controversy. I love a good conspiracy. I love action. I, I you know, I, I and I was hoping. I was gonna go what <laughs> right <laughs> just one time just yeah like, that there would be some big reveal right. of something important right I wanted some <laughs> Republican to slap Comey around and pin him up against the wall and catch him in something you know that just some moment right Comey steps yeah. up and knocks everything off the desk and storms out you know something or you know the same thing with you know some Democrat you know just something crazy hoping Al Franken would come marching in and start yelling, you know, something crazy. And it was, it was literally nothing all day long. So like I said, the talking heads are spinning on nothing. And there you go. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, And their big thing was, Oh, he used the word lie. Yeah. Who cares? On several occasions. Yeah. I Whoopee. don't care. Don't care. Don't care. I, I, I really, I don't want to be so, um, cavalier about this. I was hoping 
that there would be something that everything could build on and somebody on one side right. or the other would have a case. But we got none of that. Thank you so much, Fran. Exactly. You bet. Have a good one. You too. She brings up a good point. That chat room today. Um, uh, you know what? I'll be honest. I uh, I had the alarm go off and uh, made coffee, and I watched this thing in bed, man. I watched it in bed, uh, curled up with my blankie, but I managed to get through it. Let's stay on the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Good evening, Jimmy. RJ. Hey, how you doing? Hey, RJ. How are you? Good, good. What's cracking? Hey, man, I just want to thank you because I know who your Monday's guest is going to be, and uh, I'm very excited. Uh, who's my Monday's guest? You don't know? Oh, oh. Your show, come on. Oh, uh, but now how do you know? I haven't even announced it yet. That's why I'm not saying who it is, but between you and I, I thank you. Ah, I'm so excited to listen to this show. Really? How do you know that? Well, because Josh, uh, ooh, oh, shit. He screwed me over. Because uh, he is a friend of mine, and oh, I just okay. chatted with him <laughs> and uh, said, you know, you ought to call into Jimmy's show. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> he says, I'm going to be on it Monday. So yeah, it's, like, oh. yeah, anyway, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, going to be a stuff that he's developed is amazing. Yeah, that's going to be a blowout show, and we're going to announce it tomorrow. The only reason why we're not ready to do it yet, we just haven't, uh, you know, finished the artwork and and getting ready for sure. the social media launch. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, his his evidence is just nuts, man. It's nuts. It so uh, yeah. I, yeah, I can't wait. But thank you for almost blowing it. That's cool. I, I- I did almost, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, you did. You did. Easy. You did. Yeah. Hey, man, anyway, I just want to say in advance, thank you, because I probably won't talk to you again for a while. So, all right, good well, job. Well, well you we th- love your show, man. Well, what would you think about uh, the uh, the testimony today? Uh, you know, I did. I paid very little attention to it. Um, I haven't even actually dug into it too much myself, but uh, well, I, you know, <clears throat> here's the deal, Jimmy. In my opinion, everything that's going on has been pre-orchestrated. Yep. And I don't know by who or what, but somebody in power, and I'm telling you right now, irregardless of how you voted, Trump was put there for a purpose, and whatever it is, he's fulfilling it, <clears throat> good or bad. Yeah, we're going to have but to write this whiners, out. Yeah, I mean, all the whiners that are whining, nothing you can do about it. It no. was never in our control. That you know that's so so true. And the other thing, and this is what um, I'm so impressed with myself. You know, if I'm going to pat myself on the back, is that mm-hmm. if something would have happened today, the country mm-hmm. would have been tipped upside down. Can you imagine what the media would be doing right now? But they don't have anything. Oh, yeah. They don't have anything. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> happened know. today. Nothing happened. I, I, for once, I don't get to hear from the right or the left with a ton of email telling me how wrong I am. No, <laughs> this time I'm right. <laughs> RJ, man, be safe out there and stay warm. All right. All right. I'll Later. T- Bye. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you. There you go. Let's stay right on the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? You're Is that li- me? Yes. Hey, Jimmy Church. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. Who's this? Samson from Denver. Hey, Samson from Denver. How are you? Hey, I was uh, I was in contact in the desert. I, I had a little quick little story for you. What's that? Uh, well, I was uh, I ran the line for Melinda Leslie at Ryan's Lookout on Saturday. Oh, you did. So I got to. Yeah, I was I was there when you busted up and uh, everything started happening. Oh right. <laughs> okay. Well, but I, so I was up there all night. So I had like I had three or four good sightings, uh, just with naked eye. Right. And uh, the, the Zorro one, everyone was screaming and cheering, and I was down the line a ways, and all the trees were in the way, and I had to go running up, like, what's everybody, what's everybody looking at? What's, what's going on? And I saw the last two flashes, bright green flashes, and then uh, and it zipped off. And I was like, I was like, oh, that, that was pretty cool what happened there. So I didn't really know until I, you saw the recap or heard the recap show. Right. That was pretty exciting. Like, well, you saw- I had a really good one that was uh, – well, yeah. hold on, hold on, hold on, Samson. Uh, you saw, I've described it as a backward Z, and as it zipped off, it like blinked its headlights, right? Its high beams. So you saw, yeah, I the, saw the blink. You saw that. Was that just the trippiest thing ever? 
Well, all I saw was the blink because I was running to get to look around the tree because I could see where the lasers were pointing, but I couldn't see what they were pointing at yet. Right, right, right. But you and saw then I got around the corner and saw the bright green flash, and I was like, that is a color green I have never seen in the sky before. Yeah, in my life. yeah. It was trippy, man. I, don't, I still don't know how to describe the color. It was like an aquamarine glowing turquoise color. It was cool, man. Yeah, I described it as LED green. Like, it was not... A normal life. Right, right, right. I've described it. You remember the movie Tron, the original Tron, not the new one, but the original yeah. Tron? You remember yeah. uh, how he was outlined in that green that uh, outlined everything in his suit? It was that color. It was like this glowing, I don't even know. It was, it was a cool color, though. It was cool. Okay, so tell me yeah. about your sightings. Uh, okay, so the one good one I had was like... It, I was, I was really surprised to find out that, like, most of the sightings are, um, you know, it's kind of like it looks like a satellite just floating across the sky, and you're just watching it move and move, just a little dot. And then you're, like, looking at it, like, hey, do something for me, do something for me. And then it does something, and you're like, oh, my God, it's not a satellite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, and I saw, I watched one for three quarters of, the, of the, the sky, and then it seemed to slow down, and I was like, I think it slowed down. But it was just enough to where I was like, I might be crazy. Right, and then and then it's and it sped back up, and I was like, I think it sped back up again, and then it slowed back down, and I was like, okay, I'm definitely crazy, and then it sped back up again, and I was like, I'm not sure what's going on, and so, then it changed directions, but but again, it was like just enough to make me like wonder if I was seeing something or not, right, and then it stopped for real, like it just stopped dead, and I was like, okay, now it's real, did you? And then it started going again, and then it changed directions, and then it winked out. Did you see anything? Were you up there when I was up there calling, uh, like calling the game? Yeah, I was up there all night. Okay, so you were there when, so were you watching anything that I was watching when I was doing the play-by-play? -play? I only saw, like, two things with the naked eye. There was a couple of things that happened that everybody in the goggles could see, and everybody was yelling and screaming, and I could see where the lasers were pointing, but I wasn't seeing anything. Oh, 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 no, what I'm asking, Samson, is when I was doing the play-by-play, -play, when I was watching something, were you ever watching what I was watching? Yeah, the the one that broke up into a couple pieces, I could see. That was trippy. You saw that? Yeah, because you were like, it looks like three, and I was like, well, it's only it looks like two to me, but I was doing the squinty thing. Right. <laughs> that was bizarre. I I still yeah, don't know what to. One. Yeah, I still don't know what to make of that. That that was pretty weird. That one didn't last very long either. I was kind of. It was it was uh, it was like going straight down. It was you know it was up like at twelve o'clock and it was coming straight there down at six o'clock, and it it was just yeah, yeah. who's who's that? Sorry, I got interrupted. Just guys walking by. Oh, <laughs> I'm standing out on the sidewalk. People looking for late night food. I think. Oh, I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah. That was that was pretty remarkable. And from what I've heard from everybody, that Saturday night. Uh, when we were up there was the most action. And uh, and then also on Sunday night, when we were doing the big fader party, Melinda Leslie shot that video of what looks like a helicopter or an airplane chasing uh, two objects. And that's a pretty bizarre uh, video. It's up. If you go to our Facebook page for Jimmy Church Radio, it's it's up on on the feed right there. I think it's uh, pinned to the top of the page, yeah. and you can watch the video. It's I pretty, glanced pretty... at it. It's definitely super interesting. I haven't really sat down and looked at it, but I do have one really fun story from the end of that night on Saturday. What happened? Um, so, why well, I was hoping to like be up on the bluff all night, but I ended up running the line. So at the end, I realized it's all being shut down, and I went running back up there, and I was like, Belinda, I haven't even got to look through a pair of goggles. Can and she's like, Oh yeah, sure. And she handed me hers. And I watched, uh, you know, I looked through the sky and I'd never looked through a pair of night vision goggles before. And I saw a satellite and I watched it cruise the whole sky and nothing happened. And I, I looked through them for like a good 10 minutes or something and didn't see anything really going on. And I was like, okay, well, that was kind of cool. And somebody else had walked up and I was like, here, have a look, you know. And uh, right about then, uh, James Gilliland walked up. And I was like, I talked to him a bunch this weekend. He was the reason I was there for the most part. Right. And uh, he walked up and a couple of people realized it was him and they kind of turned around and he said, would you guys have some good sightings tonight? And we're like, yeah, it was great. Jimmy Church was up here, and like the last guy just lit up, and I saw a bunch of good stuff. And he's like, well, did you sing the song? And, I, and we were like, what song? And he and he like looked up at this piece of the sky, and we all kind of cuddle in around him and like look at where he's looking. And he's like, if you're from Andromeda, make a flash. Yes. If you're from the Pleiades, make a flash. And it totally flashed right where we were looking. No it was way. Awesome. 
Oh, that it is so awesome. cool. That is so cool. What and, and and Samson, when that happens, how do you feel? It's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, the, 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 I'd also, I'd seen a lot of those flashes that night, but they're so minor. You're like, well, what does that mean? Right. You know, you can't go to your friends and be like, I saw a UFO because I saw something flash in the sky. Right. But when James Gilland is like, you want to make the sky flash, I'll make the sky flash. <laughs> That's for real. Man, we're going to be up at his place uh, at the end of the month, man, just a, a few weeks from now. And I cannot wait for that. I mean, I just cannot wait. Yeah. I, I really wanted to make it, but the summer's not working out. But I'm going to get up there this summer, too. So well, sometime I'll go up and help out and camp out and stuff. So. Well, it's taken me many, hey. many years to get up there. So, you know, you don't have to be in that much of a rush. It'd be good to see you up there uh, when we are there. And I'm sure that we'll probably do this again uh, next year. We just have to. Yeah, I will definitely party with Fader Knots for sure. Yeah, absolutely. When it goes down. Well, uh, where do you live? What state? I'm in Denver. You're in Denver. Denver. Okay, so now, yeah. yeah, we don't have anything going on in Denver yet. Uh, we just have Mount Shasta and, of course, the big meditation this weekend, and then um, uh, uh, Gilliland's Ranch, East City, uh, July 4th weekend. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we won't be out in, in Denver this year. I can't believe it, man. We're already halfway through this year. You know, we're, yeah, we're it's screaming. You know, yeah, it's screaming by, and uh, the next thing you know, it's going to be Christmas, but we'll we'll get out to Denver and uh, do something out there next year for sure. Yeah, that'd be really fun. There's a we'll go let's go camping in Creston. Man, I, I, anywhere in Denver is cool by me, and I do have I do have a, a guest that's going to be on the show um, in the next couple of weeks. I I can't really disclose, but with some really cool Denver mountain information but but i'm going to hold off I, i've already said too much and that's going to be happening in the next couple of weeks all right awesome. samson hey, hey yes hey, what, real quick have you been to the ufo watchtower up on up in the san Luis valley up there like east of pueblo or west of pueblo oh no i have not uh, i would love to go there have you yeah yeah i was just up there for new year's um and didn't see well we made we saw like a purple star which was like we've never seen in purple and since then a couple of people have described a UV kind of purple colored event kind of stuff. And I was like, oh, that might have been something. But the reason I ask is because this woman who's running it, she's got like no real information. She's got like a dry erase board in there with stuff taped to it. And it's all like the 1985 UFO stuff. And I walked in and I was like, oh, my God, you could blow people's minds. Like people are coming here because it's like a UFO hotspot. And they're walking into this little gift shop and there's no information in here, you know. And I was just like. People have no idea. Oh yeah, I get you. I get you. Anyway, we should we should converge on them and like blow their minds. Yeah, you should them. tell her about fade to black. Yeah, right. She could update the whiteboard. Hey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, right on, man. Well, Jimmy, it's great to talk to you. Keep up the good work. Boy. Yeah, thank you so much, Samson. Behave out there. We'll do. This is fade to black. Thursday night, fader night. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Three two three eight two five five zero four five. Three two three two seven five nine six nine five. I'll be right back. Way out here, we listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. Always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk, Jimmy Church with Fade to Black, KGRARadio.com. ¿Qué tal, mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carzanel, tiburón, y los invito para que escuchen a mi buen amigo, Jimmy Church Radio. Claro que sí. So I get out of the shower this morning. I'm looking in the mirror, and not to brag, but my beach body is coming back. I'm not fearing shorts and bathing suits this summer. And thanks to naturesyouth.com, I'm here to help you too. The anti-aging experts, Nature's Youth RSF, they've developed an all-natural amino acid supplement that supports my body to naturally increase HGH levels without synthetic hormones. You see, HGH, or human growth hormone, it's produced by the pituitary gland, and it's essential for growth and regeneration of my cells and tissues. Elevated HGH levels can contribute to not only increasing my energy, improving my libido, and reducing my body fat, but overall improving my exercise capacity. Now, you know, just by watching what I eat, doing a little exercise, and taking my daily dose of Nature's Youth RSF, I'm in a swimsuit, and I'm happy to be there. My beach body is back. I want you to get yours. 
Join me today and look better and less with help from Nature's Youth. It's easy. Go to naturesyouth.com. That's naturesyouth.com. And bring on the sunshine. You listen to us, and we listen to you. And so does the CIA. (laughs) KGRARadio.com. Hi, folks. CBD is the home run hitter for health right now. Why, you ask? Because of what it does for the body. Unfortunately, I can't tell you all about the benefit. You know, there's reasons. Do your due diligence and log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com. Ancient Life Oil uses organic ingredients and is blended in coconut oil for some of the best benefits. Legal in 50 states and non-psychoactive. Log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com. You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is Revolution. The Revolution will not be televised. The Revolution is on radio. Ciao. Welcome back. Fade to Black. Thursday night. It is Fader Night. 323-825-5045 or 323-275-9695. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Follow me on Twitter at jchurchradio. Twitter off the hook. Great call from Samson. And Mark Tarana just uh, tweeted out. He says, Jimmy, I heard the Zorro, uh, the Zorro UFO was a green diamond shape um i didn't see it uh with binoculars i didn't see it with anything uh that would enlarge it um but that's interesting uh what i saw was round but it was also very fast we're calling it the zorro because it was a backward z right so just imagine it right that's uh basically what it did that's kind of how long it was um what was interesting if you haven't heard i'll describe the sighting for you again and it was see let me do this when you have uh what what was probably i don't know three or four hundred people up there right and there was probably i'm guessing right now probably 30 pairs of night vision goggles which is a lot so when you have 30 people looking up at the sky out of three or 400, when they are all looking at something, then you're hearing 30 people, you know, scream when, you know, ah, you know, and, and all of the actions going on. And that's one thing. But the Zorro UFO was a naked eye thing. It just happened in the sky uh and it was big in front of everybody and so three or four hundred people yelled and screamed at the same time it was dramatic and so it, just imagine that it was you know because you know you're hearing when you're up there for so long and you're hearing this you know the the coming and going of of 30 people you know yelling and screaming <clears throat> but this thing was right up in in the sky Again, uh, if you're looking out over the cliff and you're looking straight and you're looking at me right now in the uh, in the uh, bunker cam, maybe this will help kind of describe it. So just imagine looking up to your left, you know, uh, uh, up into the sky, not off into the distance, but like up at like 11 o'clock, you know, like right there. <clears throat> and the sky is wide open. And then this thing, and it was high too. That was the other thing. It was it was not close. It was high. I don't know, ten thousand feet or something. But it 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 fluttered, and 
so and it made this backward Z shape up uh, to your left if you're looking like straight up, not at twelve o'clock, but just like a little bit over. And this Z shape. Now, if you're looking up at the sky and you put your arm out, spread your fingers apart. That's how big it was. You know, like a a six inch swoop of the sky. It was big. And it fluttered at the beginning. It like it like turned on. I don't want to say power up because everybody says that. I wanted to describe it as like I saw it. It like blinked. It fluttered and then lit up solid and then did went across, stopped, came down, and then continued again and made the Z thing. And it lasted this long. It went it, it went blink blink and then took off. And no, no aircraft does that. Not, but uh, I don't know what it was. But the loud screams that followed, it was just so cool. And I just stood there. It's like, did that, you know? And and I kind of thought, and I don't want to um, imagine this or or put something out there that that isn't real. But um, I you know my imagination. But one thing that I did see that I think that I saw, and I would love to hear from somebody else, when it did the double blink and it was going off in that direction, it looked like it was it was just a black dot that continued. But it may have been because of the trail of the lights and the way that it, it, it took off when it blinked that maybe my imagination was imagining it going in that direction. But that's what my memory is like. Like it continued and and took off, so it was it was just absolutely incredible. Let's go back to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Jimmy Kelborn, how's it going? Hey, Kelborn, how are you, man? Hey, we're doing well. I'm here with Michelle, also. Hi, Jimmy. What's up, Michelle? <laughs> hey, uh, I called in because uh, I told uh, the Fader Knots uh, at contact the story, and actually didn't get the chance to tell you guys, so I figured I'd share it tonight. Yeah, what what what's up? So I have a friend who is an air traffic controller uh, over on the East Coast here, and uh, we're right up against Lake Erie because I, I live in Buffalo. Right. And he was he was telling me that he, the FAA, I guess, used to have a protocol for uh, UFOs where they would take a report and then send it up. I guess they get so many UFOs that they actually scrapped the protocol and they said, don't even bother reporting them anymore because we get too many. So I guess there's one night where... Uh, a, a United commuter, or a, excuse me, a commuter air, air pilot called the tower and said, hey, you know, tower, do you see this object over the lake? You know, we're wondering if you have it on radar because it's not moving anywhere. And he looks at the radar. He says, yeah, we have it on radar, but we don't know what it is. And he looks out the window of the tower and there's a thing hovering over the lake. And they're looking, and they're calling the pilot and they say, you know, can you, can you get a better look at it? Whatever. And they say, no, no we, you know, obviously they didn't adjust the course of the plane. And then the pilot calls back about two minutes later as he gets a little closer to the airport. And he says, hey, uh, we saw the object shoot off into the distance, and it went down into the lake. Really? Yeah. So it's kind of interesting to think about. And then, curiously enough, a few weeks ago, I actually saw a video someone had taken on Lake Erie. I'm not sure when it was taken, but it shows an object also going into the lake. It's on YouTube if you, if you just uh, search it. Is it uh, Michael Lee Hill? I don't know. I'd have to look that up. I missed that show, unfortunately. Right, right. Well, he's been shooting video out there for, for years and years and years. Um, but that's interesting. Okay, what, what happens in the video? Uh, well, I, I know there's uh, like there's like uh, lakeside cliffs on uh, Lake Erie, right in between Buffalo and the state line. Right. And uh, I'm pretty sure that's where they were at. And it was right about dusk. And you can hear people, you know, there's commotion in the background and people are, you know, oh, what's that? You know, typical of a UFO sighting video. Right. And the guy zooms in on this thing. And it's, it, I don't know if it was really a disc or an orb type object, but you can see it kind of hovering there. There's no lights or anything on it. It's just. It's there's no way it could be. I guess I couldn't say for sure, but it didn't look man-made. What's it and called? It maybe, what's what's the video called? Uh, I think it was Lake Erie 
UFO. I want to say it was at September of 2015 is what's ringing a bell. It was a, a month or two ago that I, that I watched it. Okay. I'm going to see if I can find it here really quick. And, uh, eight, three, 16. Is it called Cleveland? No, no, it was, it was in New York state. I know that. Okay. All right. Mm, man. That, that may have been a sighting of the same object from somebody else. I don't know. And, and that's all you can't think of anything else that is in, in the video title. Cause there's a lot, man. I mean, I'm, there is a lot of, uh, I would have to go through my, my search history, and once I find it, I could always uh, okay. link it to you on Twitter, but all that's right. all I can recall right well, now. Well, Lake Erie UFO get, uh, video gets me 26,600 hits. Okay, so cool. there, yeah. Yeah. And, and the first selection, everything here, that's for uh, these are all different videos. They, it could be anything. Okay, all right. I, I, I want to see this video. I do. I do, and I, got, I, t- I, I take your word for it. I've got for you guys. And real quick, and actually another report they had from the tower was uh, it was him and another gentleman working the tower on an overnight, and they saw an object that did not appear on radar, said it was also over the lake, and it hovered there for maybe four or five seconds, he said, and then shot off and disappeared to the, to the north. And they, since they know how to do all the calculations using whatever math they use, I'm not sure, but he said they did the, the math on it, and it would have to have been uh, traveling eight to 900 miles an hour to, to travel the distance in the sky that they saw. I was like, wow, that's nuts. Yeah. Yeah. That is nuts. That is nuts. Um, text it, hit me back, go find that video and hit me back on Twitter. I want to see it. Okay. I'm going to see if I can find it for you. Yeah. That that's really cool. Were you up there, um, Saturday night at contact? Did you see the Zorro? Uh, we actually left before that, unfortunately. So we missed that part. Okay. What we did have, we did we did some see some things, but we didn't see that particular. Yeah, yeah, it was a crazy night that night. There was a lot. I mean, I probably saw fifteen different things or or more. I mean, it was nonstop when I was up there. There was no question about it. It was crazy. So much fun, man. So much fun, and we've uh, you know we've got something that we're going to break out with everybody with some night vision here. Um, so. As this develops, we we we're, we're we're developing a relationship with the company, and we've you know the deal is uh, pretty much ready to go. And I cannot wait to get night vision in all the fader knots hands. You know, I'm going to be out there every single night, man. I swear, I'm going to be out there with my Gen Three Pluses every single night because I know something's going on in the sky as I'm speaking right now. We're missing something. Always. Hey, uh, do you have any calls on deck, or do you got time for another one? Uh, I do have calls on deck, but I don't hang up on anybody. What What, what else do you have? Okay. Uh, so Michelle lives in West Virginia, and we went to a town the other day called Shepherdstown. It's on ghost hunters a lot, and um, like a lot of um, ghost shows on cable. I don't watch cable, so it's on um, a lot of ghost stuff, but. Um, Shepherdstown, it's like Civil War area, area, and, um, as soon as we got back from contact in the desert, we went there, and, um, you know, we visited this tea shop, and my friend, she used to work there, and she tells me about all these incidents that happened to her while she's there with, like, um, ghosts and stuff, and I, I don't really believe in ghosts, I believe in, like, entities and stuff, but... Um, while we were there, we met the owner of the shop, and she was very, very, very nice. And while we were talking to her, um, out of nowhere, the door had shut. It, like, slammed, and there was no door at the back. So that was kind of confusing because, like, no one shut the door in the back. Right. And, well, there was, was there a door in the back? No, no, no Yeah, there was no door in the There was no draft. So we were really confused as to how that happened. And I thought she had said something about color, a color, but I saw something white, like, walk through the door. So I thought that was super weird, but um, she, like, so I, I questioned her about it, and she told me that she does seances there, and she invited me and Mike to all that kind of stuff, and um, and to, like, just, I don't know, talk to the people. 
<laughs> talk to the dad, I guess. And I don't know. I thought that was pretty good. Cool. And so I'm sure. I don't know. Yeah, there you go. You got to love it when that happens. And, and listen, I'm going to let you guys go so you can. Uh, I need you to tweet up that link. I want to see it. Okay. And we'll talk about it got on the it. show tonight. All right, so you guys behave out there. It reminds me of, and good night, you guys. It reminds me of uh, uh, one night when Rita and I were actually in bed, and uh, I don't know what we were. Uh, we were watching TV or something, but it doesn't matter. The The room was quiet, and the the lid to our toilet in the bathroom which is in there's a there's a what do you call it a, a a suite and then we have the the where the toilet is is in a separate room in the master bath right so it's like two rooms removed and it just boom and just fell down and it's never in all the years that we've had that house it has never done that ever and it did it that night and it was loud and we both jumped, and we both knew what it was, and neither of us were going to go check. That's the funny part. Let's go back to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Uh, this is Alan from Detroit, Fade or Not. Hey, Alan from Detroit, Fade or Not. Good evening. How are you? I'm very well. How are you doing, Jimmy? I'm doing good, man. And uh, first-time caller, huh? Yeah, first time. Yeah. They were, saying, they were saying on chat, it seems like hardly nobody's calling in. So I said, what's the number? And I called in. Oh, no, no. I've got back-to-back -back phone calls, man. But uh, that's... Oh, well. I, you know what? I, I got a, you know I what? Got a story for you. you well, I, I want your story here, Alan, in just a second. But let me tell you something. Everybody in the chat room, and they're listening to me right now, there are a bunch uh -huh. of... You know, you know that's a big soap opera, right? Oh, of course. Yeah, that's just a big soap opera in there. I'm going to see if I can hey, light up. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. And uh, <laughs> <there are many. laughs> it's one big soap opera. All right, Alan, what 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 have you got for me? Uh, I don't know if you uh, checked your email. I sent you a couple of photos of some UFOs I took right outside here in my driveway in Detroit. Right. One was like four or 500 foot long cigar shaped UFO. I was taking pictures of the sun, which I do every day. Three, four hundred pictures a day sometimes. I've taken thousands of pictures of the sun. Well, I checked this one, and off to the right of the sun is this big cylindrical object. And I didn't see it with my naked eye, but there it was. And I sent you that picture on your uh, email. I don't know if you got that. Yeah, picture. well, you uh, those emails did get to me, but I'm, I'm just going to let you know that the pictures were tiny. You need to send the big file. Yeah, the picture is like a uh, half inch by half inch. Oh, okay. Yeah, you need to. That. Yeah, so when you send, I'm sure in your email, when you send stuff like that, it'll say yeah. full image, partial, you know, send full, whatever the biggest file size is that you can send, send that. I got you. Yeah, you sent me like Anyways, the thumbnail. Yeah, I sent you like three or four. Yeah, you did, but they were all, like I said, they were the size of your of your image in the chat room, whatever that is like. Oh, okay, oh so, yeah, so think about that. But anyway, um, yeah. and you didn't see it with the naked eye, huh? No, I hardly ever see them. I've seen uh, once, I've seen them with the naked eye, and there's two uh, orbs back to back, one right after the other, going across the northern sky. That was last summer. That's the only time I've ever seen them. Right. Uh, I go out in the driveway. A lot of times I get a feeling just to go out there and, they, and take pictures, you know, randomly, and there's always something on them. I can't explain it. Right. But it, I, I have got, over the past year, I bet I've got 30 pictures of, U, of UFOs. And they're not, you know, airplanes, and they're not bugs and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, I pretty much know what I'm looking at. I'm looking at a UFO. Yeah, what do you think it is? You think you're some kind of magnet? I'm 30%, 35% Cherokee Indian, like your guest the other night. Right. And like guest the other night, I pretty much just get these intuitive things in me to go out there and start taking pictures. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, anyway, that happens to me a lot, so I go out and I do it, and... I got really nobody to share it with. I don't want to, you know, 
get a website and put it all up, you know, make a big deal out of it. But right. you know, they're there. They're right, telling, right, they're right, there. right, 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 right. Well, um, yeah, like I said, I, I got the pictures, but they were really, really small. Um, resend them. Just send me the big stuff, and uh, and I'll be able to uh, to uh, look at them and uh, and comment. But yeah, I absolutely yeah. want to see them. I've been sending them to you on my cell phone. I'll get on the computer here tomorrow or something and send you on something on the computer. Yeah, I have bunches of them. Full size. Yep, full size. All right, man. Thank you so All much, right, Alan. I'm- like to give a shout out to Gene and Fran and Cat and all the rest. All right. Well, you just did. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Talk to you, Alan. Thank you so much. Oh, hey, one more thing. Yeah. Give Mart give Martin a hug for me. Martin. 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 Okay. All right. Is there? Uh... You know who I'm talking about? Mm, no. Really? No. No. I must say I must be out of tune with something. Who is Matt Meyer? Oh, Mate. You mean Martin. Yeah. Oh, Martin Meyer. Martin, yeah. Oh, of course. He's like 10 days old. Yeah, I would, but, but he's <laughs> over in him a hug for me. He's in Florida. I'll talk to you. Thank you so much, Alan. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, that was uh, Martin. Um, what I would... Oh, oh, oh. So, uh, yeah, uh, Mark Tarana just says, here comes the uh, toilet lid story. The toilet lid story, I don't have any ghost stories, right? I don't have anything like that. It's the only one I got, Mark. So, come on, give me a break. I got I to gotta have one good story. There is, uh, before I go back to the phones, oh, you know what? Uh, I'm looking at the clock here. Okay, let's do another call before the break. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Uh, this is Chase from Salem. Hey Chase, from, how are you, man? I'm doing pretty good. It's a first time caller. Yes, you are. And uh, um, what's on your mind? I can't called in to uh, talk about a couple of my UFO stories. Actually, what do you got? Um, so me and my family were going out to this uh, to this reservation in Eastern Oregon called Canada. Two lane highway was dark. And uh, my dad points up, and my dad was in the Air Force. I was probably, I don't know, four or five. Right. But uh, my, uh, there's these five lights doing zigzags in the sky from one side to the other. It's crazy. So we stopped and pulled over, and uh, we're looking at the lights, and they were being, uh, being all crazy, and all of a sudden they stopped. It came together like the points of a star. And uh, they sat there for probably like five, ten minutes, right? And uh, all of a sudden they shot out. Uh, all different directions. And the one that went out to our right landed in the desert. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. And, and you saw but it? Just, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. You saw it land. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was I was little. I mean, I can remember it like it was yesterday. But, yeah, it's still vivid in my mind. And what did your dad say? Um, we were actually just talking about it two days ago. Did he stop the car? Did you guys get out? Yeah, no, we uh, we stopped the car and got out. We were kind of sitting there watching them for five, ten minutes, and they uh, they kind of did their thing, and then they came together, and they sat there for a couple more minutes, and they just took off all different directions. And what color were they? What did you do? Um, mostly white and, like, a yellowish. Right. Kind of orange. Right. Yeah. And was your dad tripping or or what? Yeah, no, we were all kind of tripping. <laughs> and uh, and what did you know? You guys just talked about this two days ago. What does he say now? Yeah, it's still the same story. I mean, he has no idea what was what would what it was or anything. I mean, as far as we know, they were just some kind of UFO. Oh man, that's that's uh, that's pretty cool. Now I don't know how old you are, but how long ago did this happen? Um. That was 23 years ago. 23 years ago. So you're 28. See, that's how I get yep, your I'll age out of you. Remember. See, that's how I get your age out of you. That was pretty smooth. <laughs> Are you impressed? Uh, 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 you're I know you're impressed. a pretty smart guy. <laughs> you're not that impressed. Okay, what's the other uh, <laughs> What's the other encounter? Oh, so me and my buddy were uh, hanging out. and So I live in Salem, Oregon, right in the valley. We were hanging out in the outskirts. Uh, sitting around talking about uh, paranormal and UFO stuff. And uh, it was kind of dark. We were sitting on my the hood of my blazer. And we had just got done talking about a couple of our UFO stories. And we were like, hey, you know, how cool would it be if, uh, if a UFO just showed up, you know? And a couple seconds later, 
like it, this weird feeling hit us both. And we looked at each other and we both looked up the same part of the sky and we seen this light and we were both convinced that it wasn't there before. Right. And like four or five, maybe six seconds went by and we're staring at this thing. And I'm pretty sure it knew that we were looking at it because it moved off to the left behind the tip of this tree and stopped. And me and my buddy kind of looked at each other and we both leaned to the right so that we could see if we could see it. Right. And we could both see it right there at the corner. Right. And then it did it again. It shifted over to behind the tip of the tree. And it knew you were looking. Isn't that trippy when that happens? <laughs> no, the trippy part was what happened next. Okay. What happened next? At that point, me and my buddy got this really weird feeling that there was something standing off to our right. Mm. or left, mm. sorry, in the tree line. It was about six, seven feet away. And uh, at that point, we both kind of got spooked, kind of got pretty real for us at the moment, and uh, we got in my car and drove off. Yeah, smart, <laughs> smart. I, I, I don't know if I would have tried to see what was looking, but if you pick up that vibe, get in the car and go. Well, I, it, didn't seem, it didn't seem hostile or nothing. I mean, it, it, we, we kind of asked for it, you know? Right, right. But you did so, get in the car and split, so you were split. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we totally did. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, man. You got to go with your gut instinct. You just got to. Um, and yeah, you, and I was young. Uh, what happened with uh, what happened with the UFO, though? What happened with that? Did it fly away? Um, did it stay? Do you remember? I don't know, actually. After I got that feeling that there was something standing there in the tree line, I kind of... I kind of blew the UFO off because I, you know, <laughs> I was, I was, I was kind of worried about getting out of there more than I was about anything else. I think my buddy kind of kept an eye on it, but I haven't talked to him about it for a while. Yeah. Sure. What, what, as you guys were driving away, we've got about 60 seconds uh, before the commercial, but uh, when you guys were driving away, what did he think you saw? What, what, what were you guys talking about? Oh, no, about? we were both convinced that that was a UFO. Right. And that something had come down and was standing in that tree line. Yeah, man, that's a great... We were talking about it the whole way home. Man, that is a great experience, and thank you for sharing it. Man, love first-time callers, man, and don't be a stranger. Oh, I won't. Take care, dude. Yeah, you too. Salem is a trippy place, man. I'll I'll go on the record right now. Salem, a lot of stuff has gone on in Salem, and that is... uh, That's a great experience. All right. 323-825-5045 323-825-5045 or 323-275-9695 this is fade to black fader night thursday night open lines i'll be right back hi everybody this is rob halford the mental guard on jimmychurchradio.com this is kgra digital broadcasting station Salt Lake City, Utah, Van Buren, Arkansas. Okay, nurse, let's get this man to the ER, stat. Right away, doctor. We see this every day. Heart attack or angina pain due to blocked and clogged arteries. Chelation can remove obstructions or blockages from arteries and help avoid painful and expensive surgery. Now there's Angioprim. It's a liquid oral chelation product that you take with juice. You start to feel the results fast. Angioprim increases blood flow all over the body, and that means more energy and strength to take on the day with less aches and pains. 60 years of research has gone into chelation. And Angioprim is the result, a safe and easy way to unblock your veins and arteries from buildup that slow circulation. Paging Dr. Jones, please report to the emergency room right away. Log on now for a special radio offer from Angioprim. That's angioprim.com slash radio, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M, angioprim.com slash radio, or call 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on the smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. 
Your contact for current news and trending topics. KGRARadio.com. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of Fade to Black by just calling 605-562-4482. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Just call 605-562-4482. You can listen to me, Jimmy Church, on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Go back, Lee Tappy. You want to know a secret? I love ponies. I really love ponies. I'm serious. I couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush. Why fade to black? Because you never got that pony. Damn it. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. Fader night, Thursday night, open lines. Eric just said, I'm trying to talk the real Debbie uh, to Colin. She wants to tell you her story from 2010. Encourage her. Uh, have her call the 275 line, Eric. Come on, Debbie. I, I want to hear a story from 2010. What is it? Okay, I'll hold that line open. 323-275-9695. All right, there you go. Otherwise, 323 323- Eight two five five zero four five and uh what was I what was I going back? Oh, 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 oh. Um before I get to uh North Korea fired four anti ship missiles into the sea east of the Korean pen- uh, peninsula yesterday, uh right before showtime. Missiles flew about 124 miles, and this is what's really funny. It's the fourth missile test since South Korean President Moon Jae in took office back in May and they're going nuts over there firing the missiles. Right. And it turns out that the United States uh, military and stuff, they didn't even report on it. They didn't care. (laughs) They said they only flew 124 miles and they were anti-ship missiles and, and, and we don't care. It was a really funny reaction. I don't know if the reaction was pointed straight back What's the full number? I just said three two three two seven five nine six nine five. It's posted. It's in Twitter. It's right there, Eric. Right below your tweet. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! Um, but yeah, was it pointed uh, straight back at uh, Kim Fatty Fat? You know, just to let them know that they don't care. I thought it was a very very funny reaction. Anyway, we were. Um, uh, Alan called him from Detroit and he's talking about going out in his driveway. I, when the one strange thing and, and I've never seen this again. Uh, the one strange thing that I thought was bizarro for me was, uh, uh, the, the famous Honda, the helpful Honda guy sighting that we had. And it was, it was daylight and I, I want to say my memory says it was in the middle of the afternoon, three o'clock, bright blue sky um, outside here in Southern California. And I was at a Honda dealership and I was walking out of the building and I see like four or five of the helpful Honda guys, right, with the blue shirts on, all looking up in the parking lot uh, where the cars are, all looking up to the sky. So I walk out and I do what they're doing. And I just look up and this, this guy was walking past me and he goes, Hey man, go check out the UFO. I said, what? And he walks past me, goes in the building. So I walk out and I look up and what this is. And it was bizarre. Uh, It's the only way I can describe it. It was high and whatever it was, it was big because it was uh, there was a few clouds in the sky. It was a bright blue sky, but it was behind the clouds, right, way up there. 
And it was, I don't know what the orientation was, but it's moving across the sky. And it's uh, it's silver. And it was, it was rotating, right? It was spinning. And you could see it. It was like faceted. That's the best way I could explain it because the sun, it was catching the sun, and you could see it like sparkling as it turned, right? And it's like, you know, peep, peep, peep. And it's moving across, so... Now, I I think it was a satellite. That's what I think because it's it was moving at a pretty good clip. You know, it's just moving across, moving across, moving across. But then it slowed down and stopped. And it was, you know, that was the trippy thing too. And it was moving against the wind. The wind was blowing in the other direction. But it was up so high, I don't, you know, I don't know. Anyway, so the, it stops, but it's still spinning and then it stopped spinning and the 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 what do I want to say the reflection that was happening you know like blip 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 and it slows down and then stops spinning right and this took this took 5 or 10 minutes for this whole thing this process and then it stops and and then it just goes up up out into the blue sky and it took for it to finally disappear and we stood there man i was just standing there watching it and then it and that it just disappeared in the blueness and and shrunk and disappeared and was gone now i want to say that it was a satellite because of uh but i've never seen a satellite like inside of the atmosphere or a satellite that you could see in daylight that was the trippy part but the, the the fascinating thing was it was spinning. So a, a satellite would spin, right? I guess. I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know uh, enough about satellites and how they work, but I've never seen anything in the middle of the day, right? And it was it was so high up. I don't, again, I don't know altitudes or whatever, but it was it felt like it was in space, but we could see it. Does that make sense? You know, now this was the other trippy part about this is that uh, all of us had cell phones. And I stood there for five or ten minutes and never even thought about taking my cell phone out. We were talking about it. We were watching it. And I didn't shoot a video. I don't know if I could have captured anything. But nonetheless, didn't shoot a video. None of us did. And it's just part of the... Part of memories. It's just something that I saw and was gone. Uh, there you go. All right. Three two three eight two five five zero four five. Three two three two seven five nine six nine five. I got a great story here. This is uh, pretty funny. Comes out of China, and it's the China Huishan Dairy, big dairy over in China. And they have now announced that they are missing most of its cash. This is China, by the way. All right. Now, Britain is a divided country. Liberal Democrat leader Tom Farron says as conservatives struggle to hold on to the majority in the UK election. That's the latest. That was just emailed to me. So how long are we going to have to wait until until this uh, resolves over in Great Britain? Very interesting. That's the latest. The China Huishan Dairy. Now, it's missing most of its cash. About $375 million. Following the disappearance of a top finance executive. Well, there you go. There's the explanation, right? The company, which says it runs more than 80 dairy farms. That's how big this company is has been sinking deeper into crisis since its stock plunged 91% on a single day in March. In a statement made this past Monday, Huishan said its accounts suggested it should have about $426 million in cash. But its banks say it only has about $69 million, and the vast majority of that is tied up in restricted deposits. In other words, they can't even get to their own money. Now, the one person who might have some of the answers 
is a woman named Guy Kuhn. She is the executive director who oversaw the company's treasury and cash operations. Now, this is where it gets great. She disappeared in March after sending a letter to the bank saying, and I'm quoting here, recent work stress has taken a toll on her health and she needed to take some time off. She never came back and they're missing over $300 million in cash. You gotta love it, man. You gotta love it. Chinese. And you would think the Chinese are in control, right? You always think that. I, I, I don't know why that is, but, but it just, it just feels good to me. <laughs> Somebody got away with, with what appears to be, uh, the perfect crime. So there you go. Now, also, um, before I get, uh, go back to the phones here, I have, uh, another story. Um, uh, you know what? That ties into Comey. I'm going to save this because it's really, really interesting, and it involves the Kremlin, and this happened earlier today. So there you go. Let's go to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Hey, Jimmy Church. This is Craig from the great state of Oregon. Craig from the great so What makes Oregon so great? <laughs> well, I was born here, and I've lived here my whole life. So. Well, I thought you were um, going to say... But yeah, I, uh, I, you know, it's uh, green. There's all kinds of... Uh, stuff for different people you know there's um good weed lots of hiking and um good weed oh uh, raw counting uh yeah absolutely it's actually it's legal here now too so that's uh, what i'm talking you know, about just <laughs> well hey uh, i unfortunately have never had a uh, ufo experience but i had an interesting um sorry i'm kind of nervous um an aura camera experience uh, i'd like to share with you <laughs> so uh have you ever had your aura picture taken jimmy i have so um, I, I had never a couple years ago, and so I was at a local uh, festival, and the lady there was uh, had a booth with a camera. Yep, I've done it. And, hey, uh, do me a favor and, and take yourself off speaker. All right. It, it, Is that better? Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, sorry. That's okay. Um, so um, I never had my picture taken, so uh, there was a, a lady there with a booth with really old uh you know, the Polaroid type, uh, or a camera thing. So I get in line and I'm checking out all the, uh, interesting different, uh, colors of different people's auras, right? She had examples and I'm, I'm looking at them all and I'm like, man, I, you know, I hope my aura is blue. Uh, I've always loved blue. All my cars have been blue, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, my, my aura is blue. So I, uh, I go home and I tell my wife and she's kind of, uh, jealous that I got my aura picture taken. So we went back the next day and, and got one, uh, taken together. Um, and what was interesting about that, it was both of, uh, both of us were blue. Sorry, my dogs are all up in my face. Um, and then, so I started thinking things like, you know, um, you know, maybe that's why we like each other or that's why we're attracted to each other. Cause we have similar auras or, or something like that. Right. Right. So fast forward a year later, uh, we go back to the festival again. Sure enough, the lady's there with the aura camera. And uh, we're both kind of scientific-minded, um, so we decide to do a little experiment. Uh, so we both pick a color that we uh, we want our aura to be, uh, but don't tell e any uh, don't tell each other. So as soon as she snaps the photo and she's you know waving it to get it um, developed, developed, right? We 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 both tell her what color we picked. Sure enough, she slaps that photo down on the table. And it was both the colors that we had picked. I had picked orange. She had picked yellow. And our auras were that cor uh, color. I, I could not believe it. I mean, my jaw dropped to the floor. Like, this, this can't be. <laughs> like, wow. I, mean, I don't know if the, you know, the whole aura thing is real or not. But it just really makes me wonder. We can maybe project the color or the energies that we uh, want to project, right? Yeah, there's something to it, uh, to the aura stuff. I've done it. And I've watched uh, many, many people do before and after stuff. Um, and, and, cha and it's pretty trippy. There's some, I, I don't know how to explain it, but I know that there is, is something going on there. Um, what did I do? Um, trying to think this man, I'm going to have to ask Rita. 
but we <laughs> did something. This was a, a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago. We went and did our pictures, right? And we went and showed yep. them to a friend of ours who owns, um, uh, I don't want to say his name, but he owns a chocolate company, right? And he sells the, this organic chocolate, and he has chocolate drinks, too, as well. He's got just crazy formulas of stuff. And and he looks at my Aura picture, and I think he, I, I think Rita was with me. I think we did it together. Well, anyway, he looked, and he goes, okay, dude, drink this, and then go back and take another picture. I said, all right. Oh. You know, so I did a shot of, you know, I should have asked what I was drinking, you know. And I do this shot of chocolate with, uh, you know, 15 different you know, organic compounds in it. But so I drink it. And I said, give it a minute. Now go back. So we went back and, and took more pictures. And our aura totally changed. It was bizarre. I was like, no. Right? And it was. <laughs> I know, right? It, yeah. It was weird. But so I went back and took another one about uh five or ten minutes after that now i'm now i'm tripping i'm i think i'm high i'm not you know but i was so tripped out i went back and the the third picture was exactly like the second one i thought it might change you know like something was dip you know but no uh, so whatever I drank, man, I don't know, man, <laughs> ayahuasca, I don't know. But um, but I went back and, and took two pictures in a row about 10 minutes apart, and they were they were different. And I want to think, I want to say that my first one was blue, too, and the next two, I have them somewhere, and my next two were like fire, right, like orange-yellow. Right. Yeah, that's that's my memory. But your story is better than mine. Yours is, oh, no. that's pretty trippy. What did your girlfriend say? Did I say girlfriend? I meant my wife. Oh, no, I heard <laughs> you say girlfriend. Is she listening right now? Uh, no, she's uh, actually on a research boat in the middle of the Pacific right now. Oh, she's what? an oceanographer. Oh, what is she doing? Uh, she goes out and takes, you know, samples and they look at, um, you know, microbiology in the ocean and how, you know, they absorb carbon and, and things like that. And she's in the Pacific? You know, climate science. <laughs> uh, like Smithsonian stuff? Oh, no. She works for uh, you know, a local university here. Oh, I got you. I got you. Um, yeah. What is she saying about Fukushima and sushi? Oh, you know, that's interesting because when they are out on the research vessels, they'll, you know, the crew people, they'll fish and they'll pull out ahi and stuff and they'll, like, give it to the chef to cook up, right? And, you know, I'm, I was like telling her, Hey, you know, you should be careful or be taking some kelp, but she just, you know, I don't, it, it, yeah, they're not, they're not concerned about it at all. Are you kidding me? For real? No, for real. <laughs> Man, sushi, right? And the whole thing about Fukushima is <laughs> flipping me out. I don't know. I would almost take a Geiger counter to a sushi restaurant. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm that freaked out about it right now. And it's not that, um, no, that's Japan. It's a long way. No, you know, with the ocean currents and what's coming out of Fukushima and, and what is going on and the way that fish migrate and everything else and radiation moving across here to the California coast from, from California, from Mexico to Alaska, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Would, Everyday would, stuff washes up. Still. They, 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 it just does. And I'm tripping out about that right now. I am just really, really, really freaked out because um, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day in Indianapolis. What's up, Naptown? By the way, old friend of mine in Indianapolis. His name's Jerry, uh, the drummer in my band in high school. And I'm talking to Jerry, and he goes, dude, uh, this is like two days ago. Fukushima, man, do you ever talk about Fukushima? And I said, well, I do from time to time, but the the news and trying to get accurate reporting, it doesn't, it's, he goes, exactly. But I've got yeah. a friend, right? So, and he starts telling me, he said that, um, again, you can't get any real data, but there was something that he told me that just rang out that Fukushima is not going to chill for like 2000 years. That's the first thing, right? And they cannot, it, it is just, just rate they they haven't enclosed they haven't saved they haven't stopped 
any of this. This radiation is it's like a sun, right? It's so yeah, hot. I heard they can't even find like two of the reactors, right? They've like melted down melted into down. the, you know, right. earth and they're Right. They send robots in, and the robots die because there's so much radiation. I've read <laughs> that the robots are melting, right? Yeah. <laughs> now, it's so if you think about that, the, it cannot be healthy for the water. It just cannot. And it, I picture in my mind that eventually the entire world's oceans are going to be just radiated. They're going to be glowing. They're yeah. going to be like pink. You know, and, and yeah. the temperature of the ocean is going to continue to get hotter. I don't want to be naive here. Like, you know, I, um, I'm some kind of idiot or some unschooled person that doesn't know what I'm talking about. It only makes sense to me that it's going to, it's not going to unradiate itself. And I know the oceans cleanse themselves and they have a way of fixing themselves and balancing themselves out. But they've never had to deal with what they are dealing with now with Fukushima. It just cannot be Absolutely. healthy. It cannot. And what what about, and this is the other thing. Now, what was your name again? Uh, Craig. Okay, Craig. What about, quite simply, the Japanese people eat fish. That is right. their diet. They love sushi. They love fish. That's what they do. What are they doing for fish? What are they doing? What how's how's it affected their diet? And how about the the island of Japan itself? Right? With all the radiation that is going on there, what what's going to happen to Japan in 10, 15 or 20 years? Is anybody going to live there? And I'm not joking it's about absolutely. this. Yeah, I'm being very very for real. And the other part for me, uh, and I'm glad that you're aware of it and that I'm talking about it now is why is there not any reporting? Why is the media completely shut down on this? No documentaries, no film crews are going in there. Nobody's allowed to talk about it. It reminds me of Chernobyl. After Chernobyl went down, you couldn't, first off, it was so radioactive that you couldn't get close to it. So you couldn't go in there with the documentary crew or try to report on it or do some news. You couldn't do it. Same thing with Fukushima. So, therefore, we're not getting anything in the media about it. It's like there's a blackout about Fukushima. Could be the the most important thing on planet Earth right now for the environment, and we know nothing. We know nothing. Well, it could be for the same reason when they don't talk about UFOs either. They can't control it, right? So, why talk about something you can't control and and they know it's a problem and if if it's raised here in the united states they're going to start asking questions about our nuclear power plants yeah right and could the same thing happen here and people don't realize that our nuclear power plant like no insurance company in the right mind is going to insure a nuclear power plant right so we as citizens of the united states our tax dollars pays you know for the insurance of those power plants you're exactly right craig 100 percent. hey don't be a stranger to the show my friend great phone call hey love you jimmy go back to tepe <laughs> go back to tepe that's what i'm talking about uh, thank you so much craig great phone call and uh with that let's just uh let's just stay on the phones let me uh, do this. Yeah, I mean, Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? This is Brad. Hey, hey, Brad. How we doing? <laughs> I'm doing good, man. You barbecuing? Actually, no. Tonight, I had some uh, Mexican food takeout. Pretty good. Hey, hey, are you are you're almost replacing? Not yet. You're not at that status. But you're almost <laughs> replacing Jose as our staff photographer. How does that feel? Oh, man. I don't know. I, it's, I'm just having fun. Just spreading <laughs> some love out there, putting some good shots, you know? <laughs> so what's on your mind tonight, my friend? Well, I was digging the uh, last caller. I didn't get his name. But um, I'm feeling his old... Uh, or, you know, the topic Fukushima and, and stuff, because, you know, I live close to Sano. Right. And Ofri, that is. Yep. Yeah, we and, drove. Uh, we, we, dro we got a lot of issues there. And it's like, honestly, I feel like it could be the next Fukushima, considering the fault lines and and just who knows, you know. I, I'm not trying to be doom and gloom on the deal, but it's just like, 
it's not a smart move right now. We've got to figure out a solution. And I've been part of, uh, you know, a couple coalitions down there trying to help, you know, push people towards, you know, doing some. But I finally read the paperwork, and it said it doesn't matter how many votes you have or anything, there's no solution. And I, it just it blew my mind, Jimmy. I just wanted to share that with you. Well, and, and, and Brad, thank you for the phone call. And uh, every time I drive by San Onofre, uh, for the listeners out there that don't know what Brad and I are referring to, there we have um, halfway between Orange County and San Diego uh, near Oceanside, Camp Pendleton, we have San Onofre, uh, which is a nuclear plant, and it's two domes, and it's it, it literally... From the freeway, you can hit it with a rock, right? I mean, it's right in your face. And it's on a beach where there's a fantastic surfing, San Onofre Beach. Um, I'm sure you've surfed out there. And I've I've thought about the surfers. How do you surf in that water knowing that the cooling water from those cooling towers is being spit out into the ocean and is probably responsible for the cool waves, right? And and, and, yeah. it, and it's right there. If anything ever happened, you have Los Angeles, you have Oceanside, you have San Diego, you have Camp Pendleton, you have the Marine Base. It's 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 populated. It used to be unpopulated, but it's not that way now. You know, you have you have. Yeah population constant between San Diego and and San Clemente, right? It's 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 built out now where it used to be, you know, a little bit more well, it was remote. I mean when they built it there wasn't anybody around there for probably ten or twenty miles in both directions, but it's not that kind of party now. And so when you're driving right. by it on the five freeway, it's right there in your face, a nuclear power plant Right there, right in the middle of population. Yeah, I got to say, it, it just realistically, it makes no sense. You know, let's put uh, nuclear reactors and waste everywhere right next to the beach and uh, put bombs and, you know, <laughs> you know, testing just massive stuff yes. all the time. You can hear the bombs going off in the morning sometimes. It's like they're testing. And I understand, like, you know, they got to train and whatnot to protect this beautiful country that we live in, you know. And that's one thing I will stand behind, you know, is, you know, God bless those boys and women out there, you know, out there protecting us and keeping us, you know, free. But at the same time, it, at some point, we got to, like, wise up and, like, let's make some good decisions and uh, get past this little section and, and go towards some other, you know, sources of power or something, you know. Yeah, you know I'm talking about, yeah, I do, I do, and I'll tell you something that's really trippy, Brad. And I've got to head to a break here, but I'll, I'll share this: when you're driving on the five right there, and it's one thing to look at the nuclear reactors, the right there, but the right. power lines from the reactor that are feeding the state of California go right over the freeway. Right. And I just look at it and think about all the electricity, all of the power that is there, but all of the electromagnetic interference, all that EM crackling stuff. I've never stopped the car and gotten out, but I can only imagine what the voltage is. And it's, <laughs> and the cars are going right underneath. And what if one of those power lines broke? Right. It's coming out of a nuclear oh, power plant. How much juice is going through those cables. They're not in the ground, right? They're above ground, above the freeway. It's so trippy. Hey, Brad, I got to head to a commercial, man. Don't you ever change and do me a favor. Yeah, babe. Say hi to Michelle. Now go cook some food. I'll talk to you. Love you, brother. Right yeah. back at you, Brad. Thank you so much. This is Thursday night. It's fader night. Brad's pictures, man. If you uh, go over to our Facebook page or check out Twitter, Brad is the best. Brad is... No, he's the second best next to Jose Torres. All right, more of your phone calls are next. This is Fade to Black's Thursday night. It is Fader Night. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. I'll be right back. Jimmy Church on JimmyChurchRadio.com.
Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. So you went to dinner last night, you had your favorite pasta. Ugh. Or maybe you had a heavy, spicy meal and it left you. Ugh. Get the tea.com. Maybe you mow down a huge steak and your plumbing is all plugged. Ugh. Get the tea.com. Our super strength tea will take care of your occasional. Ugh. It's all organic and non-GMO. Get rid of Ugh. We have so many great supplements, but our super tea is number one. Get the tea.com. That's get the tea.com. So you love talk radio. Then you'll love talkstreamlive.com. Talkstream Live is always on 24-7 with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fade to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the Fade to Black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of Fade to Black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Go Beckley Tepe. What's up, Fader Knots? Studio Dumb loves Fade to Black and the F2B audience so much that they have put together the ultimate stereo Bluetooth system. They've done it just for you. Man, check this out. The Studio Dome SBB2 stereo system is here. It's featuring two Studio Boombox 2 SBB2 wireless Bluetooth speakers packed in its own custom hard shell case. This Studio Dome system features the very latest in stereo Bluetooth technology. The two full-range boomboxes are in true wireless stereo. You've got to hear this. It's amazing. It's just $129, and use the promo code JCRTWS, and you'll also get free shipping. It's simple. Just go to JimmyChurchRadio.com, click on the Studio Dome banner. Go back, Lee Tepe. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. KGRARadio.com This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com Welcome back. Fade to Black. Thursday night, Fader night. If you're on hold, stay right there. 323-275-9695. That line and bank is open. And if you're calling in on the other line and you're not getting through and not getting put on hold, uh, there you go. 323-275-9695. No excuses. And uh, before I go back to the calls, today... As the United States awaited the testimony of former FBI chief James Comey on the Russian election hacking saga, Moscow said it had observed hacking attempts launched against it from the United States territory every single day. That's right. Speaking this morning, Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov refused to be drawn on whether the alleged attacks were the work of government or non-government actors. 
Peskov's statement comes hours before Comey appeared before the Senate Intelligence Committee. He followed through on expectations that he would publicly contradict aspects of the United States President Donald Trump's accounts of their private conversations, characterizing some of the president's comments as lies. Very interesting. And, you know, that, I'm telling you, the drama, as as we get to the bottom of all of this, it's not going to be what we suspect. I think it's going to be out of control. Let's go back to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hiley Hatfield. How you doing, Jimmy? Uh, it's who? Hiley Hatfield. Hiley Hatfield. How are you? Great, man. What's cracking? Well, I want to talk about something important, man. Uh, Chris Cornell, uh, tell me about your uh, days with uh, Soundgarden, man, if you would. Wow, I've talked about it enough. I mean, I'm still a little bit bummed out about the whole thing. You know, I I was just uh, I was uh, very blessed to be able to go out there for a big chunk of '89 and 1990. Uh, you know, uh, with Soundgarden, I was the sound guy for the opening band, and so which eventually worked into other stuff. And, you know, it was just a family and everybody that was out there. I was with a band called the Big F. And we were also with, on that tour, a band from Canada called Voivod. And if you know anything about Canadian bands, uh, Voivod was pretty big back then. And so I think on that tour... Uh, Voivod and Soundgarden, I think every other night uh, one band was headlining and then, then the next band was headlining, that kind of thing. So uh, we just went out and did this tour. The first part of the tour, I don't think Voivod was on it. I think Soundgarden was the headliner, and that lasted for a few months. But it was just, you know, um, I, again, my memories, you know, that was 30 what? that. 30 what years ago, 30 years ago that, um, don't ask me. Yeah. It was a long time ago. <laughs> it's just that it, he was, uh, I recognized his voice from the very, very beginning as being something very special. You know, uh, some people that I was on that tour with, um, were posting and we got into a chat together that we, that we were all together, the three or four of us. And their reactions, uh, as we started uh, remembering things, were the same as mine. That, you know, Chris was, from what we all remembered, was, uh, you know, was the sober guy on the tour. I certainly wasn't. He was so, it just seemed really together. You know, he just seemed really together. He'd be the last person that I would suspect to to uh, take his own life the way he did. You know, I just thought he was just a very smart, very bright, very talented guy and uh, was out there changing the world. You know, that's that's about as far as I want to go with it. You know, it, it, it just sucks. The whole thing just sucks. Yeah. What about your uh, favorite song that he wrote? He wrote so many, man. It's uh... Uh, Well, you know, um, uh, again... Uh, my, my take on it, the stuff that, that they did later, um, uh, which was after that tour, the, the album that we toured on, which was louder than love. I thought that that oh, was, yeah. I thought that was real sound garden to me, but part of it is because I, that was what I was introduced to the stuff that came out later was always really good. Uh, but it wasn't as good as the Louder Than Love um, album. Uh, for me, off of that album, uh, I loved Kevin's Mom. I thought that song was really good, even when I found out what it, the song was about, which was pretty trippy. But, <laughs> but, but anyway, um, that that oh man, uh, yeah, that whole album. It was just again, it was just an emotional time for me. I had to go back and relive those memories. The post that I did about Chris, and I really mean this, I always thought, because I haven't seen him in a long, long time. I saw him when he was rehearsing in California, um, in Hollywood. Um, uh, we took him for granted, man. Uh, yeah, and so uh, I hadn't seen him in so long, and I thought that you know him and I, I always thought that one day the, the two of us would sit down, maybe with some other friends that were on that tour, and we could just go back and recall and laugh about everything that we went through because it was a lot of fun. 
I don't think that Soundgarden knew at that time. I don't think that country knew at that time uh, that grunge was going to do what they were going to do. And I mean, grunge wasn't even a word um, on that tour it, that came out later. And I don't think that they knew that their impact uh, was going to be so long lasting and it was going to change the country like it did. And, and that was the joy of that tour. It was very innocent. It was fun. And uh, there you go. You know, that's, that's, Creative, yeah. yeah, that's how I want to remember it. Okay, Jimmy, I appreciate your time. Man. All I right. Love you. Yeah. Have a great night. Yeah. That ah, man, Chris Cornell, you know, uh, again, it was just emotional when we went to uh, contact in the desert. Uh, Cause Chris had passed away a couple of days before contact and, and I had, you know, people coming up and asking me, you know, how I felt. And I was just like, man, I had checked out of the media, Rita and I, we hadn't, you know, and I had nearly, you know, put that, put that out of my mind. Cause I, I couldn't believe it. The night, this is what, this is what had happened because he passed away after playing in Detroit. So imagine that for a second, you know, what time Detroit and, and st- by the time it hit the news, uh, Rita was sleeping and I had gotten up for something. I went back to bed and for some reason I picked up my cell phone and just clicked on it. And there it was, it was the breaking news. And I was like, what? And I literally laid awake all night. I laid awake and, and just, just tripped out. Yeah. Tripped out. And uh, it's, I don't know what's up with Seattle and, you know, like Lane Staley and, uh, you know, and, and just, man, Jimi Hendrix and uh, Kurt Cobain, what's up with Seattle and that kind of stuff? Because the, the creativity that comes out of Seattle, second to none, there's no question about something is going on with the water up in Seattle. There's that part. But the second part is, you know, when you're when you're that good and you affect so many people um, in in such a positive way, and to turn around and take that from everybody, you know, that's the thing. You're taking it. I I don't know what kind of trauma could be going down with somebody that you know that's tasting success, has admiration of fans. You have people that look up to you. And and what what's going on in your life that could be so backwards, right? I, I just trip on that. I trip on that, especially with Chris. You know, you get to be that age. He was my age. And so you get to, you know, you would think that you have matured and you've grown up and everything is good. Somebody mentioned to me uh, uh, when talking about Chris, because I brought that up. I thought, man, I thought that he would have been past all of that and, and 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 just grew up and it was good he's got kids he's got his wife he's, man he was married forever right that uh, you'd be uh, past that and somebody said well man but like what about robin williams and i was like yeah you know all that success you would think that you know success and money and happiness brings everything but robin williams took his own life so i yeah, and then it just made me wonder. You don't know. You just don't know what's going on in their personal lives. I was so happy. One of the things, uh, and then we'll move on, but one of the things about Chris that I thought was really cool was when he sung the theme song to uh, James Bond. And we got uh, the DVD and the and the video is in there. And I was like, man, dude, you've, you've made it when you sing the theme to James Bond, right? <laughs> you know, and I was just so happy, you know, just incredible. Um, uh, on a, on a high note, let me just, I'll say this. Um, Chris, I don't know how many shows we did. Okay. I don't, what a show every other night, every three nights, every two nights, you know, for that length of time. So I don't know, 50, hundred shows. I have no idea, but his voice every single night was on it. He never had a bad night. Never, never had a bad night. Yeah, I, you know, I've I've toured and done so many uh, shows with so many different uh, singers, 
And trust me, man, you can have a bad night. We used to, uh, I was on tour with this band where this guy, the singer, had to take steroid shots like once a week. Man, we'd be in some town somewhere, and he'd have to go and see a doctor with a script to get steroid shot in his neck or every couple of weeks. Or, and if he didn't get it, I don't know if it was psychological or if this was a real dependence, but he would freak out, dude, I can't sing tonight. I gotta, I gotta go get steroid shots. And, um, and, but, but Chris, every single night he was on it, he, my memory says he never had a bad night, never sang on pitch, you know, there you go. All right, man. I just can't believe I went down those memories. It's just, it's so sad. So sad. All right, uh, 323-825-5045, 9695 All right, got a, got a little time for a couple more calls. United States aircraft shot down an Iranian-made drone that fired on coalition forces patrolling with partner forces in southern Syria. This happened today. This is the first time that pro-Syrian regime forces, which the United States says includes the Iranian-backed Shia militias, shot at and have fired on the United States-led coalition. Now, this is where it gets really, really, really nuts, and I know I say that a lot. Uh, An F-15, United States F-15 jet, shot down the Iranian-made Sahid-129 drone, which was being controlled from a location in Syria north of At-Tanth. It was shot down after it dropped one of several weapons, and this is what gets crazy. It was carrying near a position where the coalition personnel are training and advising partner ground forces in their fight against ISIS. How trippy is that? They got busted, man. Let's go to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Hi, Jimmy. It's Miss Michelle. Hey, Miss Michelle. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Well, you're calling me, so that means you're in a good mood, and so am I. Well, I'm off tonight, so that's, you know. Well, that's always half Yay, of it. Hey, everybody. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> um, anyway, I want to call you and tell you, I often get very strange dreams. That's, a, that's just a fact. That's part of being me. Right. Anyway, on Saturday night, my time was about 10.30. I suddenly said, I think I'm tired. I laid down and went, like, immediately to sleep. Anybody knows me knows that just doesn't happen. Okay. I don't sleep. I sleep two and three hours at a time. Right. The best. I didn't wake up until mm, 7.30 in the morning. Now, my time... Coordinating to London time, I just want to make this clear, right. is one hour's difference. So when I went to bed at 10.30, my time, it was just like 9.30 in London, okay? Right. A, a p.m. on to Saturday night. When I, I woke up, the first thing I said is, my left hand's been cut off. And I looked at my hand. It wasn't. But it was that real. This dream I had, I I dreamt that I had a black sack over my head, like a burlap sack. And I was being drugged by my um, right arm across I don't know where, but I was being drugged by that one arm. Meanwhile, I could hear, I had no clue what was going on in London. Mind you, okay, I'm asleep. Right. I'm hearing London Bridge is falling down, sung by like a bunch of kids. Really oh, creepy, wow. you know, wow. like that creepy sort of. Yes, and you know the tune I'm talking about. We all do. Yes, <laughs> everybody knows that, and all. And I could hear all this commotion, and not a whole lot of stuff that, that I could understand because all I could hear is these kids singing London Bridge, and then all of a sudden everything went quiet, and I could feel the pain of my hand being cut. I, I felt that happen, my left hand, mind you. And when everything went quiet and I felt like nobody else was around, I pulled this sack off my head. That's how come I know it was a black burlap sack. I pulled this sack off my head, and there's my hand cut 
above the thumb across my hand. Okay? This is very exact. I know exactly what happened in this dream. Right. I pick up the sack, wrap my wound up in it, and just like you would if you were, and I'm looking around, I'm cut, there's nothing but sand around me. And I see, I, I'm going to say it wrong because I'm going to call it samurai. It's not that, but a very um, eastern sword. Is that called a samurai sword? It's like got that curve to it, and it's wide near the end. I think a samurai is right, but I understand what you're saying. Like a scimitar. Yeah, that one of those. Yeah. Scimitar. Yeah, that's the right word. Thank you. Right. One of those swords, and the rest of my hand's there, and I'm looking around going, where, and blood's everywhere, and I'm like, well, where is anybody? Because everywhere I looked, there's nothing but sand. So I began to walk. I kept on seeing images, Jimmy. This is so weird. I'd see images in, like, almost like little metal plates of images in the sand. And several of them were very, very Masonic, things that I, you know, I could say I conjured that up in my own head if I was dreaming it, okay? Right. Um, like the the hand with the pyramid and the eye within it. Right. That, those sort of symbols. But then there's other ones I don't know. So I'm calling out to my Fader family. Right. You guys are going to tell me what these symbols mean because somebody's going to know. Right. I had... That same sword, um, straight out, with a moon hanging, a crescent moon hanging upside down, and the star in the middle, a face holding the moon to the sword, wow. almost like Egyptian head. That's one symbol. Wow. Another symbol is, these are the ones I can remember really well, um, is a circle with a funny-shaped U in it and a dot at the top, and the dot almost looked like it was a square dot. But the U was definitely a U, not like a crescent moon upside down. It was definitely a U, but it was like almost Arabic. Okay. And then there's a rectangle with a bunch of different letters, and I know they're not Latin. I'm not sure what it was, but I've seen them. And it's, it's like a, just a square box with four direct, like I would say, letters of some sort, but in another language, another script than what we use. So that's three and, plus the sword. So that's four. Okay. A any more? Yes. Well, I'd, I'd go by and I'd see these holes in the, in the sand and I would go creep around it because it's like I knew they were underground. What, whoever done what to me were underground. And I knew something terrible was going on, that they were underground. But I will tell you this, I do know things that happened before they happened. This is unusual that I dream it while it's happening. Because, of course, I woke up to find out, oh, my God, <laughs> you know, right. London was attacked right. again. Right. And, and this time they were all, they cut people. Which is Take what happened. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Take that one in. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my right, God. Because right. I woke up literally looking for my hand to be missing. That, it was that real. It was that real that my right arm hurt the next day, all day long, like at the shoulder, as though I'd been dragged. Wow. Well, the... Uh, yeah. the uh... The scimitar with the crescent moon and the star, now without the face, but that is nearly the Masonic symbol. If you would have said that there was a, a 90 degree angle, you know, in there too as well, then I would really flip out because that's, that's Masonic, but also, uh, but also a couple of, uh, it's an, it's an Arabic symbol too as well. Um, that's interesting. The U with the square. I've never seen this symbol before, so I don't know. Yeah. It's just like. Well, the U like with the uh, square dot above it, that's interesting. Um, IPD just posted. He said U in a circle is the kosher union mark, which, okay, but he's not. Uh, you didn't say the U is in a circle, did you? Yes, the U, if there's a circle. Right. With a, but it's not a normal U. It's a really funny script you, so I doubt that it means you what we call you. But it's you like, said that, the, and there was a square dot above it, right? Above it, yes, like 
Mm, yeah, it was above it, not within it. Above oh. it, but within the circle. Okay, well, hold on here. He just sent me an image of it. Let me see if he's... Uh, okay, what you sent IPD is not what she's describing. Okay, all right. Um, not kosher union, Mark. That, I, that that's, uh, Anyway, that's... Uh, that's very interesting. Somebody is uh, going to put this together. And the other one was a rectangle with with three or four letters on the inside of it, it's right? Four, four type, I would say, letters, or they may even be, I don't, see, I don't speak Arabic. I don't know. I, I get the feeling that it's Arabic, or Arabic okay? Right, right. But I don't want to say it might be four words, but it's four definite characters, so I'll call it. Right within it. Wow. And wow. Yes. But the thing I'm going to tell you, I get an overwhelming feeling and I felt this from the beginning of the whole ISIS. You guys are going to be shocked when you hear this because it's from, you know, it's from an area where women aren't powerful, but you're going to find a woman's behind it. There's your strong link. And that's why they can't find, they can't stop it. They're looking for a man. Oh, take note and take note. Every, just put every one of these attacks have a woman in it. Wow, that's and interesting. And I bet you the woman got away of this, what, this attack. I can guarantee it. There's a definite feminine overtone. Wouldn't that be funny? Spoken. Who are the, They're looking for Al Baghdadi, right? And it would turn out that Yeah, exactly. Al, and it's Mama. Right. <laughs> it's it's Al, Bag, Al Bag Mama. That's right. That's funny. Thank you so much, Michelle. And we're right up against the end of the show, so i got to say good night. Yes, good night, Jimmy. I'm sorry, I didn't get in until too late. That's but, okay. Yeah. The phones have been jammed up. It's okay. Thank you, yeah. Michelle. Great dream. Thank you. Be safe. Bye. There, that, that's okay. So, everybody, let's decipher that one, right? Okay, I got 60 seconds. I got I to gotta share this one with you. I'm going to leave with this. A diamond ring purchased for $13.00. Sold today for $847,667, roughly double its initial estimated value of between three hundred and twenty-five and four hundred and fifty-six thousand dollars sold at Sotheby's Fine Jewels in London. Now, the twenty-six carat 26 carat ring was first purchased in the 1980s by an anonymous seller who bought the ring out of a trunk of a car. Somebody selling stuff out of the trunk of the car bought it because they thought it was costume jewelry. Bought it for 13 bucks. The realization of the ring's value uh, came decades later when the wearer chose to have the ring appraised at a local jeweler. The ring was later identified as a cushion-shaped diamond set in a 19th century mount. How cool is that? This is Fade to Black, another Fader Night in the Books. want to thank everybody that phoned home tonight, man. Great conversations. And, of course, thank you to the one and only John Rappaport. Fade to Black's executive producer is Rita Kamarian. Show is produced by Hilton J. Paul, Mark D. Kovar, LJ3, Renee Jonas. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Bob. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Vitoa, Mark D. Kovar, Fady by Dale, Webmaster Drew the Geek, Music Doug Aldrich, Intro Space Boy, SpaceboyMusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network, and syndication is KGRA The Planet. This broadcast is owned copyrighted 2017 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. I'll see everybody on Monday. We'll announce everything tomorrow. R.J. Cole almost blew it. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Follow me on Twitter at JChurchRadio. Until Monday, everybody be safe this weekend. Go have some fun. Go Beckley Tepe. Tepe.